And welcome back to more Digital World Adventures. Digimon, Digimon World Tabletop. The game we are playing is a Surveyors of the Digital World game set in the Solid State Glacier. There we go, I remembered all of my words. Okay. Last time we played, the party took their leave from the Frostwind Sanctuary after rescuing Zen from a slightly awkward situation involving a much larger Digimon. All went fine. It, you know, no problems whatsoever. No one learned a thing. It was great. <laughs> Descending, uh, having spoken with the Digimon at the Frostwind Sanctuary, the party at large decided their next goal was the Snow Hearth Village, which was down along the City of Stillness, which they then began heading down, descending the mountain, heading south across the plains, bound to reach the sea and then travel around it to where the village would be. As they were reaching the end of the plains, however, a windstorm whipped up, which sent snow everywhere and quickly became a blizzard. Uh, the party sought shelter in a cave they found down close to the seashore, but also discovered the cave was not unoccupied. As they decided to settle in for the night or how, until the storm was done at least, they also chose to move further into the cave to get further from the cold. And it's at that point that they came face to face with a truly huge Digimon that was sleeping at the back of the cave. This one. And so we are picking up you guys have not yet rested, you were just moving into the cave, and you just came face to face with this thing which is lying down, its, claw, its paws are settled on basically either side of the cave, they're just at natural rest, they're so far apart that all of you could stand between both paws pretty easily. And it is just lying down there and slowly exhaling. <laughs> that there's oh, a big boy. feller. <laughs> oh. Does it look warm? Uh, it's definitely heavily furred. It's got a heavy fur coat. Hmm. Oh boy, I'm thinking, uh, Zen's thinking about it. <laughs> What's everyone else thinking about? Well, yeah. Eleanor is marveling at how large it is. Um, okay, quick question. How close are we to the giant Digimon when it appears? Well, uh, it was lit up by the flames of Pyro Bergamon, and I think you guys had a torch with you as well. But you got pretty close before you were actually able to make out the general shape of it. So I'd say you're about 10, 15 meters before it, just as you... And you don't get, have the full length of it yet. You can see now its paws and its face, but its body goes on further into the darkness. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's just that's not going to work for what I was going to do. Um, Stella immediately backs up like another 10 15 meters <laughs> just, just you know zoom in the other direction just nopes yep. out does um, pyro bergamon I... stay forward or go back with you um pyro bergamon probably doesn't nope out but seeing their uh their partner backtrack they're gonna like step back a little bit for sure as Pyro Bergamon moves back, the light that they naturally emit starts going down. And just as you're looking at this thing, the darkness slowly comes in close around it. And you can't properly, you can, now that you know it's there, you can slightly make out its shape in the darkness, but it quickly just goes from slightly lit up to in the dark. Quite ominous. Uh, Zen's thinking that this thing has an attacked us yet. Um, and probably nothing that's gonna maybe want to mess with us is gonna want to mess with this. So, um, just gonna, like, get a little closer. Mm -hmm. Try and scan it. All right. 
Uh, you take out your device and you set it to scan it, so to analyze the data in front of you, and basically it both cross-references with what knowledge the Surveillance Corp already has, and it also scans to try and get data and make assumptions, which is how it often figures out the general typing of Digimon. As you scan this, uh, something interesting happens. You get a permission denied. Well, that's odd. Uh, this is something that's never happened before, I'm assuming. Never happened to Zen before. Is it permission? Um, would Zen know if it's permission denied from the surveyors or permission denied from this Digimon? It doesn't actively say. You just got a message that popped up on the Digivice as you scanned it. It just said permission denied. Um, Zen holds up the Digivice for... I assume there's like a, like a low light setting. Yeah. Um, yeah, you like uh, when you went and met with the other Digimon before at the Frostwind, there was enough light from the Digivice for you to see just a tiny bit ahead of you. Yeah. Um, Zen's very curious, but now much more apprehensive. Uh, she doesn't want to deal with something she can't get a re any kind of read on. What is the general like mood of this thing the last time we interacted with it? Uh, the first time you came in here, Chioko called out to it and asked for permission to rest, and it not so, like not rejecting or anything. It just basically it seems ambivalent to you guys being here. Every time you, it did give some sort of reaction before it drifted off into its own sleep, it was mostly uncaring that you were there but not in like a negative way. It's just like, okay. Well, we mustn't wake it then, should we? I think we should take advantage of this thing's warm, safe presence and maybe rest a little. No? It's it like does stand out that you guys moved in to get further from the cold, but also now that you're this close to it, you can also feel there is body heat around it as well and it's actually not that it's actually not that cold around it right <laughs> i think we should just count our blessings and be thankful for this large cat and then eleanor sort of it is finds a chair-shaped rock to sort of listen she got old bones she can't just <laughs> sit on the ground Right. Well, don't forget, you guys have um, travel equipment for surviving out in the cold, so you've got sleeping gear and all that. All right, then Eleanor is just setting up camp. Yep. She's ready to go. Eleanor. Um, Zen's, Zen's fine with staying, too, but it is a little spooked. How are the Digimon with doing? Clive is apprehensive, but curious. He you know sort what? of just sticks close to, uh, to Chiyoko. He's, I think he's still probably, well, I guess he's probably not in her jacket anymore since it's a lot warmer in here, but he sort of shuffles closer and just takes her hand. Well, I'm not sure how good Clive is at taking a hand at the moment in Salomon form. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Shoko reaches down and just holds an ear. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That'll yeah, do it. Just holding the, holding the big mitten paws. <laughs> Inumon's just going to do as Inumon does and get between Zen and the big Digimon. Then, like, get right up against Zen and do that, like, dog plop down thing. Oh. <laughs> an angel. Uh, How's Galmon doing? He's trying very hard not to like 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 that. This guy's he's just got like two conflicting emotions right now. One of them is fight the big thing, and the other one is don't cause trouble for everybody else. You have two wolves inside of you. <laughs> Listen, there, there's there's a reason that like the second the thing started talking last session. Derek reached out and just, like, grabbed onto one of the, like, dangly bits of headband of Galmon to make sure that he just <laughs> doesn't yeah. dart off into the, didn't dart off into the darkness. Yeah, he's, he's just sticking with Derek. 
Uh, Pirate Bergamon is staying close to Stella. Um, probably, like, puts a big hand out to, to like, uh, alright, it's alright. As long as we are all, we're all together, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. She, like, she still hates this, but she's trying not to, like, actively freak out. She really doesn't want to wake this thing. All right. Yeah. Uh, the plan is just be very quiet and not wake daddy. Don't wake daddy. Good board game. Uh, how about for Bakumon? Eleanor's, I guess, one of the first who started setting up a sleeping bag and is just ready to bed down. Oh yeah, Bakumon is not helping her set up. <laughs> he's just like he's looking at this big guy like oh, it's, it's huge. Why why can't I be huge? I wanna be huge. He's kind of just You need you know, to eat your quietly. greens, dear. He's <laughs> like throwing a quiet tantrum over here. <laughs> no, he's fine. <laughs> I told you you gotta eat those greens. All right. Uh, so are you all setting up to sleep at the same time, or are any of you going to keep watch or anything, or what's the plan oh, here? Derek's not going to Stella is right not now. sleeping. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> not willing to let the giant thing eat us in our sleep, buddies. Pyro Bergamon is trying to get Stella. Actually, at this point, I think Pyro Bergamon probably de-digivolves. Yeah, I was going to say that as you guys were heading into rest. I was just waiting for the right moment. Yeah. Um... Back to Bergamon, uh, the light does give off fades away. Which I'm sure makes Stella feel a lot safer. Oh yeah, <laughs> totally. You do have some slight torches in that, so you've got and you did start a fire, though I think the fire is a little back towards the entrance of the cave, but you got the faintest amount of light, but it's not a lot. So we got a light, a small amount of light, and a little bit of heat and more heat on either side of us. So at least that's good for not freezing to death. Yep. Always a silver lining. As long as you're not dead, there's always a silver lining. So Stella and Derek, Stella and Derek are setting up to just watch out. Yep. Is uh, Gamon and Bergamon staying out with them, or they those two knocking out? I don't think Bergamon is capable of staying up. I do think he tries his best, but... <laughs> Bergamon's like that, the eight-year-old trying to stay up that falls asleep before yeah. he, for 9.30. Yeah. Just like... So Stella's just sitting there, and Bergamon's just kind of leaning against her asleep. Yeah. I think he definitely tried to get Stella to go to sleep at some point, but if it didn't work, it didn't work. Uh, Clive is going to ask Chiyoko to sing him a little song or hum a little tune or something. She will definitely do that. Sing a little lullaby. So Choco set up a sleeping bag to be warm in. Does Clive sleep on top of it or crawl in with her? Oh, crawl in with her. Absolutely. Yes, that's totally fine. All right. And Zen and Inuman are just out as well? Yeah, uh, Zen probably stays up a little bit trying to fiddle with the Digivice. I'm assuming, like... I mean, it's just probably going to say, you know, access denied, access denied, but she's trying to figure figure it out i'll let you give me a computer check and we'll see where that takes us oh sure i was gonna say even just for flavor um it doesn't really have to be yeah. but computer okay if you roll high enough you'll get a different message that still stops you uh you try out various different scan methods but in the end you still can't get through this there's just this flat wall of access denied permission denied that you keep running into no matter what you approach. Mm. She's very interested in it, I'll say that. But, yeah. Um, oh, I bet this would have Zen's curiosity way up. Oh, yes. But uh, I think she's also, like, it's very dark. It's very cold. Um, it's also been a big day. Maybe it's time for some rest. Yeah. I think otherwise she'd try and stay up and figure it out, but it's been a bad day for her. Okay. So, everyone, but uh, is Galmon sleeping? Anna? Oh, sorry, yes. He's uh, 
sleeping like in small amounts. Like he's just gonna nap here and there. All right. Uh, so with the others settling in to sleep, uh, Stella and Derek are staying up. Are they just keeping quiet? Are you two talking about anything? What's on your minds? Uh, I mean, Derek was mostly just staying up to watch and be able to not, you know, get eaten. So he yeah, wasn't staying up Stella as isn't... a team building building exercise or anything. <laughs> yeah, Stella isn't going to talk unless, like, Derek actually, like, talks to her. So I think they're both just sitting there in complete <laughs> silence. Sitting there in uncomfortable silence. Yeah. Well, the uncomfortable silence lasts quite a while. The others, you can tell by listening in, are pretty deep in sleep. Uh, you get the feeling if they're doing a full however long sleep to rest, you're going to be staying awake for a long time. What Are you just going to try and what role deal with that? To try and stay up. Yeah, can we roll for that? <laughs> to see who passes out first. Uh, I guess that would be an endurance check. Okay, what is that? That's body plus endurance? Yeah. Well, mine's not great for that, so let's see. Uh, how do you roll again? Uh, 3d6 plus the sum total of those. That. Okay, let's find out. Can Derek stay up? It's not specifically a bad roll. Um, I'm not going to, like, knock you guys out myself, but I'm going to say this. You get the feeling that if you stay up until the others start waking up again, and then you try and go out again, you're going to be pretty exhausted. I'm going to say Derek tries to stay up, and with that roll, winds up just, like... He lasts at least, like, an hour into the silent, uncomfortable staring at the darkness group party. What about you, Stella? Um, I mean, I guess she lasts, like, a bit longer, but, um... I mean, I'm, like, giving it to you. If you want to stay out for the full length of this, you can, or you could try and ask someone else to take watch over for you when you feel yourself burning out. It comes down to what Stella thinks is the best situation, but you're getting the feeling that if you stay up until everyone else is waking up again, and then you guys are heading back out, it's going to be rough. Yeah. Um, also, so like nothing is happening at all during this time. Like this giant Digimon is like showing no signs of like waking up or anything. It's dark and it's quiet. Yeah, I think she will eventually just kind of fall asleep anyway. Okay. Everyone is getting a full length of sleep, so everyone's wound box has recovered a full. Nice. Yay. So, uh, just because I don't think it has come up in gameplay yet, does that mean our um, aspects have reset? Yep. That does indeed mean your aspects have reset. Woohoo! This is the first time we've had a game which has gone for more than a narrative day. Also, I think I... I have a question real quick that I just want to confirm. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we're only allowed to invoke like the aspect once, but you can invoke it later, right? If it's, yes, it I can invoke the negative of the aspect whenever okay, I, just I want. want. I just want to point out that with the negative of my aspect, of my major aspect... I pretty much had a minus four to that roll if you wanted to run that that way. <laughs> Honestly, it's really hard keeping track of major aspects. Oh yeah, that's, that's why I, guys. That's why I wanted to like like bring it up that there's a pretty good chance I failed that even harder than I tried to. Because I would I would definitely consider that a scary situation. Or at least that's why he was trying to stay up. Yeah. Okay, uh, tell me this. Who's the first to wake up? Eleanor. Eleanor's the first to wake up. Early to bed and early to rise. Yep. Mm, fair enough. She's up quietly making some kind of breakfast. 
I think she knows everyone's like favorite like tea flavors <laughs> or something. And I like they don't have like an electric kettle or whatever, but like actually I don't know how that would work. I think she would probably have to wait for Bergamon to be awake to do any cooking because I mean, as far as tea goes, there might be like embers left from the campfire we set up the night before. Yeah. Probably not the action. Full you do cooking. also probably have some fire starters and such among your equipment. You could light, you could relight that fire. All right. Well, she's gonna do that then. She's gonna do that and um, start. Uh, she's gonna put tea on. She's gonna put. I think she's got those little like travel sized cereal boxes. I mean, all those... grandparents do. So exactly. And she's just waiting for the like the kettle to boil, and she's just knitting, like more as, ear warmers for Bakuman. As you're just moving around to start with the day and getting the fire relit and moving supplies to get the tea going, you note at the entrance of the cave that it is there's no snow flowering about anymore. The, the snowbank has risen up pretty high, like it's not blocking the entrance to the cave, but it's. Maybe up to about your torso or, sh or shoulders, the, the snow is banked up near the entrance. But you can see that the sky is clear overhead, and it's quite bright out as well. She sort of looks so, up to herself. However long you slept, it was enough to move into a more daytime time of day. She's going to look at everyone, and uh, depending on how peacefully they're sleeping, I think she's going to let them sleep been a little bit because she's grandma yeah. <laughs> uh as you're doing your knitting and maybe just absently waiting for the others to wake up it's not you've not been up too long just enough to start moving around you do happen to look up just in time to see in the darkness overhead um a almost bright orange orb to appear and then a number more, as you see, with the amount of faint light you see, you guess their eyes, the a set of four eyes, orange eyes, which you can see in the head of this creature here. Uh, she sort of looks at it and uh, says very quietly, Oh, good morning. There's... A slight shift of its head, and that's enough to brush the roof of the ceiling, and which sets some slight small pebbles falling. That begins making enough noise that anyone sensitive enough would start to wake up. Yeah, I want I want to jump in here real quick because I think Stella is probably going to wake up like not too long afterwards anyway. Yeah, she kind of like you know like I was like kind of like here's this kind of rumbling As, sees these yeah. big glowing eyes and she screams <laughs> she oh yells. no dear it's all right it's all right she's like eleanor's like hobbling to her trying to like calm her down it's like it's okay it's just our, our friend has woken up as well nothing to worry about well at the scream derek's definitely waking up like oh shit fuck he's like <laughs> oh no oh dear group panic attack uh, Clive like else? clearly blinks his eyes. He he just he's a drooler. He's drooling probably all over Chioko, and he's just like. Chioko's like slowly waking up because that was a scream and that's not a good sign. So she's just like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> oh, it's all right, everyone. No need to panic. Our friend here is just waking up and starting their day as we all are. I see. Would you like some tea, dear? And she's talking to the enormous cat that does not have hands and cannot hold a cup, but she is asking it if it wants tea anyway. There's a shift in the air as this thing pushes itself up to its feet. And at this point, it's back and head almost pushing against the cave roof overhead. And it's like, you guys could all easily stand underneath it now as it's just reached up to its full size and it's just shuffling its back. It's shaking a little bit, but you're not getting any specific words. It just seems to be rousing. Uh, question. Yep. Is the cave, um, 
bigger back here compared to the front? Like, is this big? This space is bigger than the entrance. It actually seems like it's a consistent size in. When you first came in, you guys felt like, oh, it narrows down pretty quick. That's actually because so much of the space was taken up by this huge Digimon. Okay. But now that it's um, rising up and moving, you're realizing, oh, the cave's actually still just as big. This thing was just filling it up pretty much. Okay. Just uh, uh, wondering how it got in here. It definitely seems like it could make its way in here, but also it would be slightly awkward to do so. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing your space with us, dear. She's just trying to make conversation with this large cat. Hmm. Uh... Give me a persuade roll. Okay. That's going to be what? Willpower? Is that willpower? It's charisma. Charisma. Okay. So that's roll 3d6 plus. Uh, that's going to be charisma. Which is seven. And then persuade, which is three. So that's a healthy plus 10. It's not a bad plus 10. Plus 10. <laughs> Very nice, a 23. Nice. Uh, as you're speaking, this thing's taking its first step forward. Just one large foot that moves forward. Uh, its feet are pretty much on either side of where you guys are, so it's able to move right over all of you without touching you guys. But as Eleanor speaks up, it stops for a moment and just lowers its head down. Not nearly enough to be reachable, but just to look down at her from above. And there's a moment where it's just looking down and you can feel the breath between its teeth washing down from above. And then it speaks again. It says, your confidence for being so small is interesting. Delightful, Thank almost. Thank you. It took years of practice. <laughs> It moves its uh, other paw forward and takes it, starts moving right past you guys again after saying that. As it's getting towards the entrance of the cave, it just pushes a paw in and it flicks it. And all the snow that was built up against the front of the cave just woof, bursts out in a cloud that stretches out far forward. Oh, wonderful. Hmm. I was worried about throwing my back out shoveling. Thanks, dear. You sure you don't want to stay for breakfast? I have my own food to get. All right. Well, thank you. Have a wonderful day. There's a moment of it standing in the entranceway of the cave with its front paws just settling into the snow outside. Its large tail flicks through the air. You see these golden orbs burst into light just around its body. They weren't there before, but they suddenly just flare up. And then, woof, it's just zoom. You get a brief thing of, oh, it's moving, and then, woof, gone. And looking at the paw prints it left, they match pretty clearly to those gigantic ones you guys walked through yesterday. Oh. Well, that certainly was a nice cat. Has anyone got any cereal preferences? I only have one of each. Uh... Zen reaches into your bag and grabs the honey, the expired honeycombs that you keep for her. <laughs> are they, are they, does she get, does Eleanor get expired ones because Zen wants them expired or are they just really expired? They're just really <laughs> old. Okay, fair enough. Joke is going to take the cornflakes. Uh, Clive, Clive is gonna sh want to share. Enamon just walks over and opens his mouth because that's his job. Um, <laughs> uh, Eleanor is gonna take her cue to just um pour Lucky Charms into his mouth. Uh... <laughs> um, is Stella coming down off of her panic attack yet? 
Um, not really. She's still kind of, you know... <laughs> Everyone else wild. is being normal and Stella's just, like, hand over her heart, trying to breathe. Bergamot yeah, is like... making you a burger right now. <laughs> Thank you, Bergamot. Burger. But yeah, it, even when this, like, huge Digimon is, like, gone, she's still not quite... Like, she's, woke. She's like, just woken up to this and it's, like... <laughs> It's, it's a, a bit lot. much. <laughs> it's a bit much. Um, I think Eleanor would notice that and sort of just uh, waddle over to her and like offer her like a juice box or whatever she has on hand as a drink. And she says, uh, "She says, now, dear, I that I understand that was quite frightening, but it's it's all right. We're all here and we're safe." Um, I, I, I guess, I guess. I, I just want to ask real quick, does anyone else sort of notice Stella freaking out over here? Or is it just kind of like Eleanor who's coming over to her? Um, Chiyoko might be like shuffling over with her cereal in one hand and climb under her arm like a, hello? Okay, well, um, if there are like multiple people like, coming over to her, like, with, the, like, have their attention on her. Um, I want to roll for Torment. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I should have known, worse. Tess. I should have known. Uh, supporting character time, yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Don't give her now, the spotlight. <laughs> she doesn't want it. It's plus willpower minus unmarked boxes. So you've got a willpower of four and no marked boxes. So 3d6 minus one. 86 minus 1. Your goal is to beat a 12. Oh, that's not oh, no! That's not it. Oh. Stella immediately oh, no. realizing she stood out because of screaming, and now people are like, are you doing okay? Is everything all right? Is starting to not have a good time with that. Mm, yeah, she kind of like just kind of yeah, shies away. Like, she sort of, like, ignores the juice box that's being offered to her. She's just, like, having a bad time. Has anyone succeeded a torment roll so far? This campaign? I don't think so. Nope. Not this campaign, for <laughs> awesome. sure. On the other hand, Derek doesn't notice at all, because he's busy looking out the front of the cave to make sure it's actually gone. All right, uh, let's do a perception check for Derek then. Okay. Perception is... Where is Hang on, is? I'm going to... It's currently willpower. I really don't think perception is what the term I should be using for, like, looking around and seeing things. Mm. I'm going to just say that's what survival is. Okay, so that's Survival is looking that. around and seeing things and using your senses. Okay, that's a better role for me, so I'm fine with that. Because that, what, what the hell? Oh, whoops. I'm searching. It really shouldn't be perception. It should be insight, which is also, I guess, decipher intent. And there are some weird choices in this thing. So it'd be. Yeah, there's some work that could be done. Intelligence plus survival? Yeah. Okay, then. I feel like a lot of the skills could be consolidated. So there's that. Is it totally okay. gone? <laughs> Uh, so you head out to the entrance and you're like looking at those poor prints. You're like, oh, that. Right, of course. That tracks. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> uh, so heading out onto the snowfield, you can see that the snow, like you came down here during the storm yesterday, so it wasn't that easy to see around. But you get the feeling already that the snow is built quite a bit higher than it was before. It was only a wind whipping up the snow when you guys were going before, but it must have snowed overnight because it seems like there's just a lot more out. Uh, the Sea of Stillness, you can still see in the distance. Uh, the cold ice of it sparkles under the sun, which has risen overhead. There is actually sunlight in the air this morning. And the thing is, the point where it launched is actually pretty deeply 
pushed into the snow because it must have done that. And then you start scanning the distance for like, okay, where did it go from here? And you can't see anything more that looks like a track. And like, how far did it go? How fast did it? You're actually having <laughs> something like that, you think. Okay. Dare's come back. Dare's come back. Okay. Big cat's gone. It's clearish outside. What's wrong with Stella? <laughs> I'll just, I'll just... <laughs> God. Um, Eleanor makes like a don't don't like uh ha like hand waving in front of her neck like don't ask kind of motion, and like hobbles unsubtly over and is like, give her some space, dear. I've just decided that every character I play, whether a human or Digimon, needs to actively make the things worse. <laughs> Stella's way. kind of like, sort of, just kind of like, curled up a bit. Like, 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 like her like, knees are like, huddled into her chest. And like, she's kind of just like, yeah, like, um, like, head in her hands, kind of, this sucks. Uh, Zen, okay. yes. you're just taking a look at your Digivice this morning after sleeping because I imagine you like looking at your tech and seeing what's going on. Yeah. Uh, you check the, the Digivice is part of what does the mapping. So you guys have the maps that you're taking and filling out as you explore on the Digivice as well. And as you take a look at that, you notice something interesting. There's an icon on it moving pretty quick in unexplored territory south of here, maybe over the Sea of Stillness, you think? And the icon is a kind of cartoonish stylized head of the giant cat Digimon that was just in here. Uh, Zen like shakes her Digivice like, what? You <laughs> never said anything like this up before. It's an accidentally activated tracking software. <laughs> <laughs> um, are our digivices are our maps linked? Yep. Um, who's closest to Zen at this point? Uh, I think Zen's gonna ask to see someone else's digivice real quick. I think it's Stella. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zen hops up onto her feet and walks over to Stella, who is not having a good time and just kind of. Give me your Digivice. <laughs> no, that's exactly like, hey, puts out a hand. Can I see your Digivice real quick? Give me your phone. Exactly. <laughs> Literally every person has broken into Stella. Eleanor is aghast in the background. She's like, no! <laughs> um, I don't, I, like, I don't even know if she's like, even gonna, like, <laughs> listen to that. Eleanor's... Is literally anyone else gonna step in? And... Uh, yes. It's Shoko sitting here, so she's like, uh, here, hold on, let me just... She's like, the, the, the problem with Shoko, she's got a bowl of cornflakes in one hand and Clio under her other arm, so she's just kind of like shuffling around trying to get into her pockets without putting anything down. <laughs> Eleanor's like trying to hobble over with her Gigi Vice and it's just back up, go bite. Before, like, really... you're getting there, but Zen's, like, slowly reaching down to shake Stella's <laughs> uh, Joker's just like, I'm here, it's in this pocket here, if you want to just, like, reach in there. Uh, Zen pauses, hands, like, halfway there, like, what? Just put the bowl of cornflakes on top of Sep Clive's head. <laughs> yeah, you know what she's gonna do that. She's just gonna like balance the cornflakes on Clive for a minute and pull out. Clive is now sweating bullets. <laughs> <laughs> the bowl, like, can I roll to see if the bowl teeters at all? Sure, give me a <laughs> cereal check. Cereal check. So that's cereal like two d six plus. Uh, I guess it would be a body check. So CPU. All right. Three d six. Yeah, okay, 3D6 plus CPU. One. Is like, are, like, the parameters, like, are, like, the the, the uh, challenge ratings or what? however it's, like, charted here, are they going to be, like, is the challenge rating going to go down because of how low the bit? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, okay. It's scaled to the difficulty of the task. 
Oh, okay, okay. Like you saw Zen. Oh man. <laughs> oh, you missed another good, it's a 3D6. 3D6. You did, you did miss a you Roll did another D6. Oh, whoops. Oh man, my brain is just monster of the week. Okay. One. Here, how about I just add how about I'll roll one D add it? Because so you saw like, Zen get a twenty-seven last night and that didn't get her anywhere. And like you got a twenty-seven now, that would be fine. Yeah, that's an eleven. You got above ten, you're fine. Okay, cool. So I think it like teeters a little bit and like he sort of lifts one of his ears, like he can't lift it very high, but just enough to sort of nudge it back into place and breathe like the smallest sigh of relief. Chioko does not notice a serial thing. She is busy handing over her Digivice to Zen. Cool, thanks. Um, Zen, <laughs> Zen not e like, doesn't even really make eye contact. Um, and is pulling up the map to see if that's also showing up. I mean, I mean technically Zen can't make eye contact with anybody. <laughs> You're right. That's true. <laughs> yeah. It's very obvious, though, that she is not even <laughs> in eye contact through the mask. That's then fair. you open up the map on the Digivice. The map is synchronized to all of them, so it's the same map for all of them. There is no tracking icon for this Digimon that is on this Digivice. Mm -hmm. uh, what Zen is very interested in, but there's no way to get confirmation at the moment, is if this is also logging into the Surveyor Corps' like, central hub, I guess, or she's very curious that there wouldn't be synced information, and that's, like, that's, like, some delicious data for her right now. <laughs> juicy. Zen got juicy double good breakfast. Data. Yeah. But she doesn't know what to do with this information exactly, but is like, hey, what if we... Did we actually have, like, an... We're going somewhere, eventually, but... Um... I think... Were we on path right now for anything, or are we still just doing, like, discovery at the moment? We there were going a, for the Sea of Stillness, weren't we? There was a village You're somewhere on the, the coast. Yeah, the, village. the village. Which is on yeah. the shores of the Sea of Stillness. And okay. that's in in relation to the uh, the tracker on this Digivice. Is that in the same direction or completely different? Um, to your understanding, the Sea of Stillness, you're pretty close to the edge of at the moment. And if you keep going around to the we around the west of it, you'll get to the village. But the tracking icon is more further south and just the tiniest bit east of where you are. Okay. Um, Zen is definitely keeping this information. Um, sorry, y'all. She's keeping this information to herself for the time <laughs> being. But it's like cool. And then uh, tosses the digivice back to you. As you guys are uh, getting set wait, up, wait. there's. Does Chiyoko yep. catch that? Her answer full of cereal and Digimon. <laughs> Well, does she pick Clive back up after giving the Digivice over? Or is she waiting for Oh, Zen yeah, yeah, no, 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 she's, she's, once, once the Digivice has been handed over to Zen, she has got the cereal in her hands again, so... Right. <laughs> can, can, Clive, can Clive roll to catch the Digivice in his mouth? Please do. All right. <laughs> That's an fail, agility. If you fail, Inumon catches it in his mouth. The same plus one. one. I feel like if Inumon yeah. caught it in his mouth, he Dang. would Oh, he would eat it, 100%. <laughs> Clive's got this Digivice. Perfect catch. Oh, Chioka's just like, she'd clap, but her hands are full, so she's just like, yay! <laughs> the hand holding Clive is just patting Clive very quickly. Yes, exactly. She's clapping her hand on his side. He looks very pleased with himself. Eleanor is, like, beaming. <laughs> There's a shake to the ground. It's not intense, but there's enough of it and consistent enough like, oh, this is like those tremors that we had before. But it lasts quite a bit longer, like upwards of 30 seconds to a minute. That There's just this consistent shake that isn't enough to throw you off your feet, but you feel you all feel it. Hmm. Okay, out of the cave. <laughs> Derek's out. All right. Derek's walking out of the cave. Yeah, Galvan's yeah, well, just like going. He's, he's gone. <laughs> He left like a minute and a half ago and nobody noticed. <laughs> um, Eleanor may be stubborn, but she trusts 
um she trusts their judgment a lot so she's also like like <coughs> quickly 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 like putting out their fire and um packing it up and she's like all right everyone that did not sound good let's move two by two organized line let's go derek <laughs> as you're the first out and the cave is pointing mostly south you can see in the far distance there's this rising cloud that rising you're not sure what it is it's not dark enough to be smoke but there's this cloud rising high in the distance and just starts just falling and spreading out again. This is in the far distance. You can't see much more beyond that. Uh, Gavon's just like, uh, that's bad. Well, I'll say, with no way to necessarily know if this is true, Derek's like, he jumped that far? Because that's what I'm assuming. <laughs> hey, uh, that doesn't look good. Derek is basically making the exact face that's in the icon. <laughs> 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 oh my lord. Gavon's just like, I can't fight a cloud. Let's go. You can't punch a cloud. Angry old man yells at cloud. <laughs> Small dog yells at cloud. <laughs> and it's just like, All the right. cloud's just going back down, right? Like, it's not like... Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it like even... this cloud of white rose high into the air and then just started falling and spreading out. Because if it, if it had looked like it was coming in this direction at all, Derek would have immediately gone with the very uh, opposite plan of, okay, everyone back in the cave. But <laughs> <laughs> Alright. One by one and two by two, everyone emerges from the cave. It is bright. The snow is pretty much pristine beyond where the initial footprints of the giant Digimon were. And you guys have a day. The air is crisp and cool, but there is no strong wind to it at all. It's time to get back on exploring. What are you going to do? So how high is the snow again? You said it got it like piled up overnight, but like, is it like knee height or is it like waist height? Because uh, it piled up, but you're not actively sinking into it. So it's like you're standing at a higher level than you were before. Oh, okay. Eleanor's got her uh, her no shoe foot on her cane and she is ready to go. Oh my god. I, that took a minute for me to visualize it. <laughs> Extremely good. Alright, so where are you going and what are you doing? Uh, make an order, give me a direction. I think Eleanor is like feeling really motivated that that night's sleep did wonders for her. So she mm -hmm. is like doing her best, just hobbling on forward. <laughs> so we're going to head towards the sea to get to the village, right? Since we have no other ideas? Yeah, well, sounds good to... At least to yeah, see... Sounds good. Yeah, at least to find, like, more Digimon would be good. Get okay, I think that's what we're doing, then. Alright, I is, think... Is, is, is also Stella, before is Stella we... still in the cave? I mean, she will. She's she will follow over now. She's not going to be the only one sitting in the cave. <laughs> all right. Um, as we're all packing up to leave, I think Elidor uh, beckons uh, to Pyramon over with like an unusually serious expression on her face. And uh, does he does he approach or is he going to ignore? Oh. Sorry, well, sorry, Whoops, I... I said the wrong Digimon name. My bad. He is a peer. I don't know why I said Bakuman. It's Bakuman. I think it is Tapirmon in like the dub or something. It is. Like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I like to stand out for a second. It's what Bakuman's happened? American cousin. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, Elidor's gonna sort of beckon uh, Bakuman over. Um, with like an unusually serious expression on her face, and like, is he gonna come over, or is he just gonna ignore her? Um, I mean, I guess he'll come over. He's like not really noticing the like super serious look on her face. He's just kind of, you know, acting like normal, just kind of bouncing through the snow a bit. Um. 
Okay, so as soon as uh, he gets closer, Eleanor's going to lean over and whisper, like, I need you to do something very, very important. I need you to keep an eye on Stella for me. Don't let her notice you. And if she seems hurt or unwell, still in the next 30 minutes or so, come tell me. Quietly. Uh, okay. Sure. And then she he gives really, one. He doesn't break. really get. He doesn't really get why she's asking him to do this. Obviously, but <laughs> and she is fine with that. Um, I think she then pats his head and is like, "Thank you. That's very helpful of you." And uh, slaps the uh, the new uh, the new ear warmer she finished up that morning <laughs> onto his head. Oh my god! It was a trick. It was a ruse. <laughs> these ones, I think these ones she probably would have made sure that are like not itchy or anything on his head. But what's the design? Um, okay. I think this one is going to be, um, I'm going to just Google the first fleece pattern I see. <laughs> Um, and it's going to be that, but wool. Um, it's going to be, oh, this is good. Um, or maybe I should make it wool pattern because it's wool, isn't it? It's going to be, I'll, I'll get back to you. I'm going <laughs> to Google. Yeah. And While this I is setting up, uh, Derek. You're, I guess, taking the lead in directions because that's what you usually do. I guess. So. Are you guys staying relatively far back from the Sea of Stillness itself and heading around, or are you going to go down closer to the ice and then follow along the coast? I mean, I thought the plan was going to go down to the coast just because we don't know. We just know that they said get to the coast and then go that direction, not. Yeah. So I figured the close, like. Plus the coast, we should at least be able to see, you know, inland a bit, unless there's a big, like, mountain in the way. So, yeah, we're going down to the coast first. All right. Uh, make a marching order for me. Okay. So who's in the lead? Who's behind who? I guess Derek's in the lead, because... Arrange yourselves I... with Derek at the lowest point, mm -hmm. and that'll be the direction you're going in. Where'd you ping? Or was Just that here. you? Okay. There's me. Calon's going with him. Uh, Chioko will be behind Eleanor. Clive is in her jacket once more. Yes. Nice and toasty. Inuman, um, unless Zen goes somewhere else, pretty much always going to take up the rear, but... Yeah, Zen's probably gone. Unless Stella is hanging back um, uh, quite a bit. She can kind of just hang sort of like near the back. Um, I guess Bakuman's also kind of hanging a little bit behind where Eleanor is because he's got a job to do, apparently. <laughs> he, like, right. he's not stealthy. Like, <laughs> he doesn't just... know why Eleanor wants him to do this. I just picture Bakuman like a very obviously gla like turning to look at like not even corner of the eye, just like look, look back. Just like Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically what he's gonna be doing. I don't think it was strategically planned this way, but I think there's like a cute little like pom pom or some cute shit like that, like on the ear, like on the ear cozies. That it could like him looking back could probably pass as him trying to move the pom-pom out of the way. <laughs> Brilliant. And we march. All right. So I'd like uh, one person to give a survival check and one person to give a perception check, just as you guys are making your way along. I can do perception. Okay, I'll do survival. All right. I can survive. <laughs> or can you? We're about to find out. Three ones. Derek just dies. 
<laughs> no, that'd be terrible. Triple snake eyes. A snake, but with three eyes instead of two. Intelligence. Or it's survival. like one and a half. Did you ever snake. see that three eyed snake? No. Survival roll. Hey, I got A1. Ooh. Here's perception. Alright. So, Derek takes uh, the immediate lead as well, navigating the path down. It's not too steep of a way down to the Sea of Stillness, especially with the uh, amount of ice that's fallen over. It seems to have built up and covered in whatever unevenness there was to create pretty much just a straight slope down towards where the ice begins. But as you're going along, it still proves rather... The snow is packed pretty hard in most places, but there are still points where it's softer and you sink a little and you have to watch out for those. You take the lead in making sure everyone else knows about what you find so that they can keep going. <clears throat> but it still involves you sometimes stepping fully into one yourself. It's not specifically an issue. You don't take any harm from it, but after about the fifth or sixth one, maybe it's starting to get slightly on your nerves that you just keep managing to leg woof, right into the snow. It's like, oh, again. He hates it. As you guys are approaching down to the Sea of Stillness, you see that the snow pretty much goes right up to the ice, and then it's it's interesting getting this close because it looks like waves frozen in time. Like there was water, like the sea was snap frozen because there's like large waves, especially directly off of where the ice starts, which are just risen up. Some are much taller than even you guys are, which gives strange curving patterns to the ice. It also makes it hard to see for any real distance out across the sea of stillness. Uh, as you're getting in, Shioko, you. Uh, looking ahead, and you scan down along the snow pathway. It's difficult to see the beginning of the Sea of Stillness so much, because with the snow falling, you don't know where its solid land changes to ice or not. But you do notice a little ways down around the coast, there is a trio of large Digimon that are standing over the ice, and they've actually cracked and broken some of the ice, and they are drinking out of the water there. Those are. Oh boy. Out of the ocean. Three of these guys. Oh, big fellers. Oh. Oh boy. They're just all Those drinking out of the water. <laughs> I'm just going to put this out there. I love that one of us noticed it. <laughs> Well, you're the first to notice, really. Like, the others might notice in a bit, but it's not, like, directly ahead of you. It's further around. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Jericho's just going to be like, there is some large Digimon ahead, um, but they're out on the ice, so we should probably be okay as long as we don't go too far out in that direction. Eleanor is going to snap pictures of them because that's, like, the one thing she can do. Yeah, Chioka's also going to get some pictures. I keep forgetting she also has a camera. It's just it's just an old camera. It's not a, it's not a fancy digital one. It's just an old camera. Yeah, I was going to say, film. it's still like using film. Yeah. So, so that's a technology. You guys got an advance warning that this is going on here. What are you going to do about it? Is that the direction that we were going to be heading in the village, or is that the other yes. direction? Yes. Oh. Of course. Like, cool, why, cool, cool, why cool, cool. wouldn't it be? Why, why, why would we expect anything else? <laughs> can we, uh, can Eleanor try to get a read on, like, what their mood is based on, like, their body language and stuff? Because she's good at that kind of shit. Their disposition? Sure, gave me a decipher intent. Awesome. Go, Grandma, go. So that's going to be... Switch go, over to go, Eleanor. Go, go, go. So that's going to be what? Intel is that going to be charisma? Go or power and decipher intent. So that's six and three. That's plus nine. 
not bad. Uh, at the moment, like they're watching, and they've got their trunks in some shattered pieces of ice, and uh, seem to be drinking water from out of the sea of stillness. It's like these are large mammoth Digimon. You know that much, just looking at them. Wait, but wait, the way... hold, hold on a second. Yep. They're drinking salt water. <laughs> I mean, to be oh. fair, sea of stillness also sounds like the way that someone that doesn't know what a lake is would call a lake. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You're right. It's probably it's like a, just a really big lake. It's like a sea, but with no waves. It's one of those freshwater seas. <laughs> Never mind. I was just like, hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Fine. Uh, Eleanor, like, the immediate thoughts that you get looking at is like, okay, these are elephant-like, and the way they're drinking just seems elephant-like. Like, there's no specific positive or negative intent. They just give you wild animal feelings. Okay. Which is interesting because a lot of the Digimon out here have given that sort of living wild sensation. And that's not the most common of thing. Like, a lot of Digimon you've met have spoken or been personable, or even the combative ones have specifically, like, wanted to fight for fighting's sake. But here there's been a lot of kind of wild, animalistic natures among the Digimon living out here in the uh, Solid State Glacier. It just stands out a little. It's a little different and a little strange. Eleanor's going to bring this up. Has anyone noticed that uh, the Digimon around this area are just a lot less chatty? It, it, it's, yes, it's, it's more like we're dealing with, like normal animals more than anything else. But that's that's unusual, isn't it? Yes, uh, as far as I was aware, aren't most, well, all Digimon sentient? Yes, I all of the ones that we met up in the, up in the sanctuary were quite talkative, but I have nothing from these ones, and, and that moose mod we saw earlier also didn't really respond like normal Digimon do. I don't. That something seems weird. It's rather Digimon unusual. Just shrugs in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like well, there's animals in the real world. I think Eleanor, who doesn't know shit about fuck, via, like <laughs> scanning and stuff, is gonna like ask Zen, like if there's anything weird about these particular Digimon, like the ones that they've encountered that have been more like, I guess, wild animals and like versus like the Digimon, like Angemon and the Sistermon that they met up at the sanctuary. Is there anything in the data that I have um, collected so far that would lead Zen to believe that there's something uh, like intrinsically different about them? Because I think Zen would just be like, there, well, there's, like, in the digital world, something must exist as, like, an animal equivalent, so it makes sense. Uh, you consider the data you've taken of the Digimon you've scanned so far, both things like the Moosemon and Anjumon up at the Frostman Sanctuary, but comparing, like, the information you do have, there's no specific, here's the reason why one's acting more wildly than the other. Okay. Um, Zen kind of shrugs. Nothing's, nothing with what I've seen is, is us, anything like that. I think, do they have like binoculars or something? Because now Eleanor is trying to act look for thing. Oh, I'm, I'm sure we do. We, we're, we're, yeah. su we're surveying. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I'll give you guys binoculars for sure. Alright, cool, because she's gonna try to look for the, um, what was it, like, it was like this red metal or something that was on the Moosemon that she picked up? Yeah. Oh, like the one Inumon ate. Yeah, like the one Inumon ate. 
Um, well, Eleanor has a piece of it herself, if, rem if I remember correctly. Yes, she does. So she's going to sort of like peek at it in her bag, and then she's going to use her binoculars to look at the, uh, the elephant-looking Digimon to see if they also have it on them. Okay, that's definitely a perception check. Okay. And we're using willpower for this as well? Yeah. Weird. Oh, well, my stats for those are Until exactly I this rebalance thing. this thing, um, we're going to just stick with this. Oh, wait, this, having this up here prevents you from being able to type, doesn't it? I no, I was able to type. I never noticed the weird fleshy gross chunk on the tusk. Oh, the underside? Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you want to be like? The far tusk. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's got the metal on one side and the no metal on the other. It's gross. Yeah, I don't think tusks work like Fuck! That. Come on, Eleanor. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, that's a roll. Eleanor her. looks oh, no, trying to study the Digimon, but she does not see any sightings of strange metal on it. Like, there's some parts of it that look metallic, but they don't look the same as the piece of metal she has. Seems strange. Okay, everyone, how how do we proceed from here? Should we investigate these Digimon, see if they're as wild as we are led to believe, or should we try to go around them? I mean, they're blocking our way to the to the to the village, right? So we are either going to have to go through them or near them at least, or length like stretch out the length of this journey. These are both bad ideas. <laughs> There's not a good idea about this. Cool. That is just Derek muttering. <laughs> oh, Derek, come on. Use that big brain of yours. You're quite smart. That Gaumon's just like, well, let's just go near them, and if they try to do anything, I'll take them out. See, we've got confidence here. I now vote for the go around them plan. <laughs> I I have faith yeah, in well, our we, Digimon. We'll if have they, to go if around them stuff. regardless, because like you can't really walk through an elephant. Yes, but thank you. I do did realize that we are not ghosts yet. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Eleanor says we're not ghosts yet. Gaumon just kind of like stares at his hands for a minute, like a kid. Like, <laughs> He's just thinking about the fact that he can't punch a ghost. <laughs> oh, no. It, it keeps him awake at night. Yeah, yeah one it has does. a scale of what I'm good at punching to what I can't punch, and ghosts are pretty low on that scale. Yeah. Oh. I think uh, Zen gives Eleanor a thumbs up. Uh, she's in favor of making con either making contact with the Digimon or moving past them. If we if we go around too far, I don't know. I mean, yes, uh, I agree. Have... I think we should try and stick to this path as close as we can, even if it might take us a little closer to the Digimon, just so we don't end up getting lost. With all the snow and ice, it's, a lot of the landscape looks quite the same. So, have we reached a consensus? Has everyone shared their thoughts? Bakumon, what do you think? <laughs> Bakumon jolts looking away from Stella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? So, what? what? <laughs> Close to like... elephant or around elephant? I'm not scared of those. I can take him. Not the question I asked, but your opinion <laughs> is duly noted. Well, I mean, the point is he's not scared to go up near to them. <laughs> the implication he was trying, he was getting that. Is Stella just keeping okay. silent on this topic? Yeah, she does not want to go anywhere near the giant elephants, as you could all probably guess, but I think she's kind of outnumbered here. Yeah, I'll say... If we may have reached a consensus, we definitely reached a majority. So, 
All right. I'm going to start moving you guys forward. You guys continue down closer to the ice. It's notably cold the closer you get here, but also there's no movement in the air. It's the words sea of stillness echo in your head when you think, yeah, it really is very still here. It stands out to you. Our internal uh, RPG thing, just the subtitle appears on the screen now. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's simple enough to start heading around the ice. Like, you're not walking out on the ice, you're still back on the snow, but it's close enough that with a few steps, you could be out over the ice. You begin heading towards where these three huge mammoth Digimon are, and as you're getting closer, you pick up on two voices in the air. It sounds like there's an argument going on just around these Digimon. These Digimon are just drinking and aren't moving that much at all, but there's two kind of heated voices nearby that are having an argument, but you can't quite pick up the words yet. Oh, Eleanor is going to go listen. <laughs> all right, Grandma's all here for the tea. No. <laughs> Grandma is here for the tea, absolutely, and her, like, kindergartner conflict resolution skills have snapped her third eye open. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eleanor heads forward. It's difficult to pick out the source of the voices. It seems to be coming from where these three huge mammoths are, but you haven't yet spotted someone else around them. But as you get closer, I don't know, have you pushed ahead of Derek to take the lead now? I think so, yeah. Yeah. As you get closer, you hear a series of complaints. And the first one is stating, you said there'd be time. You said you'd be here and it would all be fine. And I was like, it wasn't meant to be awake by now. Why are you blaming me? You were on watch. And they're just having a bit of a row about apparently someone, be something, an event being missed. Uh, Eleanor, definitely, like, it's coming from behind the mammoths? Uh, it's around them. You can't specifically pick out it's, where it specifically is. It's ghosts. Can Is there, like, a higher vantage point that uh, Eleanor can kind of attempt to waddle up to see if she can see what she can see? Uh, now that you're down by the sea, uh, further around where the mammoths are, the it, rise, it starts rising up in cliffs, honestly, which is part of the reason it was Chioko who spotted them first, because the cliffs along here means okay. that from the higher point, you couldn't see them until you were coming down towards the sea, and you could look around where the path goes. But also, you're actually able to see much further along the way now that you're kind of by the water and looking down there. And you can actually see far in the distance, you don't see any structures or buildings, but you do see rising a series of rising plumes of what looks like smoke in the far distance. Okay. I think at this point, Eleanor would loop back and let them, like everyone can hear the arguing, right? If everyone stuck behind Eleanor as she ran forward or moved forward, they'd definitely be able to pick up on it. Like, you could hear the noises of it, but Eleanor had to specifically move forward to get the specifics. All right, I think she's going to double back and uh, explain that it sounds like there are two beings arguing further down, but that she can't quite see them. So there's five things down there. Yes. Cool. This was the best I, plan. I, I think it would be worth our while to try to find the source of the argument and see what's what. We have capable Digimon with us. I think we can handle it. Sen gives a thumbs up. Thumbs up. She don't go nuts. She's good at diplomacy. This is this is this is what she's here for. All right. So Eleanor sort of just waddles off again. Um. Right. Except I think I think now she's gonna beckon Bakuman to come back to her. It's like oh, finally. <laughs> Stop. 
How well has Stella noticed Bakumon keeping an eye on her? I think she's noticed, but now that they're sort of on the move again, it's like she's kind of calming down, I think. Yeah. All right. So you, how are you guys uh, approaching the situation? I think Eleanor would still want to be first, but I think she'll turn to Bakumon and say, Okay, now, I don't know how friendly these Digimon are going to be. So, listen, I know you're a tough guy, and my I am bones, a tough guy. <laughs> yes, you are, sweetheart. Don't you ever forget it. Now, I, I, I know you won't. So clever. I, I'm going to need you to protect me if things go south, because my old bones cannot handle the weight of a mammoth. <laughs> well, my old bones can't handle many things, but one of that is one of them. Nothing to worry about. I I can take him. All right. Thank you, dear. And she 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 pats him on the head. <sighs> and uh continues on. I think she would probably hang back and wait for I don't think she would rush in. Um, without like at least Zen nearby, because I think she sees Chiyoko as someone very young, and since she can't really see Zen's face, like she registers that this is a person younger than her, but not necessarily a child. <laughs> Zen, a being of indeterminate age. <laughs> yep, definitely not. All right, so you guys are approaching these things. What order are you approaching them in? And are you approaching, obviously, like calling out ahead of time to notify them or stealthily? I don't think we're doing... For, for Eleanor, I don't think she would be doing either thing. Because the, the mammoths are not her priority. I don't think she's like making any sudden or scary moves, but she's just trying to get like around them at worst to try to see... Um, where the other voices are coming from. Okay. Yeah. Jekka's just going to follow Eleanor. This, this is her lead right now. So as you guys head around the coast, getting closer to these things, you're not being specifically obvious or unobvious. You're just moving normally. And the one furthest to the north does raise its head from where it was drinking and turn its head to look at you. As it does, there's a pause in the continuing arguments, and then there's a shuffle and shift as two larger hands, nowhere near the size of this Digimon, but large enough, settle on its back, and this large blue tusked and furred Digimon sticks its head up over the mammoth, like, just hauls oh, itself up over its back the to the guys. And it's just looking at you. It's like, Huh. And you guys are close enough that you can hear it call out and it says, Do you see this? And another Digimon kind of ducks and steps underneath the mammoth and like kind of bends double to walk underneath it before stretching up. It comes up to about its head ends up maybe halfway to three quarters up the mammoth. And these two Digimon are basically like moving over and around these two and looking at you guys. Oh boy. And they are. Oop, these two. Fun. Oh, goody. So this is the one that just holds itself over the mammoth to look out at you guys. And this is the one that was called out to and stepped underneath one and then stood up to its full height to look at you. Oh, goody. Oh, boy. You guys are close enough now that you can all see each other pretty clearly. And the blue one that's all over the top of the mouth goes... Do you think we could get its attention with humans? I think humans could work. And the blue one sets up on top of the back of the mammoth as this white one takes off into the air flying forward and the other two mammoths set up and start moving towards you as well. You have someone on the approach. Oh, my. I think we're going to roll some initiative. <laughs> 
everything planes. according to plan. Planes battle map for this one, so I'm going to bring you guys back over here. <laughs> no, yeah, they I was going to ask the what they approach with the intent to fight us, but I think you answered that question. <laughs> yeah. No, we're just rolling. They are bearing down on you, and we are about to roll initiative. We're rolling conversation. Whether you guys go fast enough to stop it before they get in close to you, we'll find out. Let's add some turns. Okay. Oh, uh, oh boy. It's How the do we roll initiative rolls, right? Again? Initiative is... Uh, 3d6 plus your Digimon's agility. Okay. That's the agility. Um, for everyone. Hmm. Are we supposed to click on a thing for this? I forget. What do you click on? What? Like, I, wasn't there some, or do we just roll the numbers? I, I, that, you just roll. I, okay. Well, here's Enumon. This for these two. Boom. Damn. Fast dog. Speedy boy. All right. Is that 17 from you, Tess? That, yeah, that's um, Buckle. Oh, yeah, that's for Enumon, right. No, no, Enumon is so, the 20. Sorry, I, I, I missed it. What is it? It's 3d6 plus... Agility. Digimon's agility. Digimon's agility. So Zen's yeah. turn is with that 20. That 17 is for Buckle yeah? Yeah. So Eleanor's turn is 17. All right, this is for uh, Galmon. Five's initiative, which was 16. Hey, pretty good, Gammon. Gammon with an 18. How are you guys getting good initiative this time? Uh, is that 11? Yeah, that's uh, Bergamon. That's Bergamon. <laughs> right, Let me get these guys going. He's just, he's, he's just a slow, he's a slow cooker. This is why I... <laughs> he, he tripped over a burger and... <laughs> Bergamon is why sometimes when you order your food, it takes like 20 minutes to bring you like a burger. Cool. They rolled low initiative. Oh, well, initiative's being calculated. I'm just going to grab some more water real quick. No problem. Okay. You. Five. And you guys. There you go. Solid party initiatives. Okay. I will be right, right back. I just gotta run and throw something in the kitchen. Alright. We will be starting with Inumon and Zen's turn. So Andy just went to the kitchen, and you'll be back in a moment. Zen, what are you going to be doing? Uh, let's see. And I think... which combat theme am I going to use? Let me fix my combat bandana. That'll do. This question. is a Digimon World Classic track. Ooh. Oh, uh, what okay. is what is the movement? For, uh, I can probably figure this out. Movement for humans is that equal to agility? Uh, it should be on your chart. Movement is. I, mean, I think it's just agility. It's five for oh, you. Oh shit! Yeah, sorry. I read poorly. Um. I'm sure, my mic just made terrible noises because my pop filter just slid down it. But okay. I think movement's like agility plus dodge or something weird like that. Because it's not just agility. Uh, movement is agility plus survival. Plus survival? Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that tracks. Uh, that so a I don't... Fantastic pattern. Yep. I don't think Zen's going to move to get any closer. She's going to stay yeah. by Inumon for now. Um, I'm just going to give you a back. Uh, she kind of like nudges his big face their big faces like 
uh, digivolving, right? Okay. <laughs> Inumon's just gonna nod, like... <laughs> and you know um, what? Inumon's going, like, full biggie. I'm using both actions. Ooh. Ooh. Alright. <clears throat> so, Inumon, are you just gonna digivolve where you are right now? I mean... If I'm gonna, if I'm doing both digi, both actions to digivolve, I think I have to, right? I'm going okay. all the way. Uh, describe to me your digivolution in like two steps. So first, how it goes to champion, and then how it okay. goes to world. So first, it's like, quick, could you make Enumon just bigger for a second? Cause I just want to confirm if the details in the rookie form or not. Okay, yeah. So his like little like forehead pattern. Uh, opens up into his, like, third eye, and then he just, like, bulks up and gets bigger. Which was not seeable last time, because I think he was underground at the time. Okay. So, uh, as you do your transformation into your champion state, Zen, you hear a rapid beeping coming from your Digivice, and you look down to it to see a strange circuit pattern which is imposed over the screen as Inumon transforms into... Inu Kibamon. Let me just get you this sheet, Andy. Say what? Oh, because I ate the thing. I ate the thing, guys. Oh. What? Oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> when I ate the thing? Oh, no. My boy. No. Okay. Then. Uh, Pong Digivolution... And Inu Kibamon uh, specifically activates its combat monster. Nope, uh, Rage Meter is active from the beginning of battle for this one. So uh, you have an action which you can take. It's pretty similar to Inu Kabemon, just, you know, a little different and uh, doesn't respond to the command to Digivolve further. Okay. So you have a simple action to do whatever. One second, I gotta. <sighs> Fine. When will we learn our lessons and stop letting our Digimon just like eat garbage? Listen, it uh, was tasty garbage. Zen is very, very interested in, in this, by the way. Like, she's not afraid necessarily or like What's worried. It? It's just like, oh, fuck, new data. Uh oh. One sec. Uh, there's not a huge amount of differences visually between Inukabemon and Inukibamon, but notably is this kind of wave of circuit patterns that races along its body. And Zen, specifically, like, your Digivice screen, you can still see things on the screen, but there's this faint circuit pattern that's overlaid, overlaid everything on it now. Hmm. Okay, one sec. My computer's being goofy. Not like any bad thing that's messing with the recording or anything, but... Yep. I gotta find where that downloaded to. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Alright, uh, well... Well... Oh. I think, uh, to fit its nature properly with this situation, Inukabamon's gonna use its full movement to charge on one of these guys because it's got that fight desire. Oh, it's a large friend again. It's a oh. different large friend, though. All right, charges up right. Just surprisingly aggressive as this Digimon just pounds through the snow, racing up towards Ice Devimon. Uh, Zen, what are you doing? Um... Zen kind of like hangs back and is mm -hmm. observing this happening, but um, she is attempting to figure out what's. I think she could probably like make. Do I need to roll to make the connection that this has to do with the thing Inumon ate? If um, I do you know Inumon ate it? I don't know that Inumon ate it. I, but um, Zen knows about the uh, shit. What's it called? <laughs> Like, uh, Zen got information about the, uh, god, the, it's not Digizoid. What do they call it? Um, she knows that, like, there's the red metal, and that yeah. the Survey Corps had, a experience with this before. Alright. I do, uh, uh, should I roll to see if, um, Zen's able to make that connection? That this is connected? Yeah, I'll do an intelligence check. 
There we go. Now I got it to load. Took me a billion days. Uh, intelligence plus knowledge. Sorry. Oh, so, oh well, you're okay. fine. Yeah. Uh, you pretty quickly put together with the way the red circuit patterns race over Inukibamon, which is the name that's being reported on your Digivice, which is slightly different to Inukabimon. And you quickly track it that it's a similar situation to whatever was going on with that Moosemon before. All right. Um, unfortunately, I think Zen is really interested in getting some combat data. Um, so she is going to move closer to Inukibamon. Yep. One, two, three, four. Uh, sorry, quick question. Do diagonals count as two spaces or one? Uh, they count as one space, but you'll have to move around everyone, so you can't just yeah. move right through people. Yeah, yeah. Just double checking. Um, so it would be like right. one, two, three, four, five. I don't think you can make it that far because four. you were here. Yeah, one, you two, three, four. You have to like three, go four. a step. Yeah. One, two, oh, three, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. Just getting out of right, the way yeah. of everyone else, because she's um, very right. interested in this, is going to be scanning. Um, can I use... That's a movement. That's action, your turn. So. Yep. All right. Derek and Galmon. Oh, I'm sorry. All I'm right. Just, I'm just so confused by my, my dog becoming not a dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, Derek knows Galmon's gonna wanna go and punch a thing. Yeah, Galmon's ready to punch. So he's just gonna like so pat Galmon's him on the back and be here. like, okay, go punch. And then Derek's gonna like start working his way back. <laughs> just how much movement does he have? It's like a fuckload, right? Derek, how much movement you got, boy? Derek 11. has the eleven movement. Yeah, Derek is just scooting away after patting Gaumon on the back to do, like, whatever that... What, what's the charisma, like, bonus attack? Because he knows Gaumon's gonna do it. Yeah, that's, uh... Bolster? Although, actually, I guess... No, Gaumon Bolster probably, is boosting... It's direct, yeah. I guess Gaumon should probably Digivolve first, actually. Yeah! So. Do that, Gaumon! Gaumon is gonna Digivolve into Gaumon. All right. It's the second big dog, and it's just as many minutes. It's dog gonna, time, yo. I'm just going to pretend that Enamon thinks that he just... It's the Lucky Charms that did it. <laughs> They're magically delicious. <laughs> Alright. Gal, Galgamon's on the field. Alright. Uh, are you moving... Is Derek moving now? Uh, I just want to confirm one thing. Does Galgamon yep. have a charge attack? I'm asking... I don't. Um, the okay. next one does. It's next Digivolve up does. Then Derek's instead going to be like, don't get hit. So I'm doing the other one that <laughs> bonus to dodge. And right. then Derek's getting the hell out. Derek uses uh, Direct to give you his charisma bonus to your next dodge check. All right. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Which is a plus four to your next dodge check. All right. And, and I'm going to move closer because I can't move an attack. So. All right. Go ahead and move however many spaces Galgamon can out of the uh, movement of eight. And Derek, the brave hero, runs away. <laughs> <laughs> movement of eight, so... Listen, we so don't Derek bravely, to bravely ran forward. away. Listen, we don't all want to scan battle damage of our Digimon. Sometimes we're just good with going... Alright, there we go. Galgamon just charges this mammoth that's stomping towards you guys. Yeah. Threat pause. Alright. Eleanor! Oh boy. All right. But Bakumon is like stomping his feet. Like, can I digivolve too? Can I digivolve? Yes, 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 yes. Please do. All right. All right. How many stages is Bakumon digivolving? Just one or both? Um, I think he's gonna go both this time. All right. Talk us through it. Oh god. Um, gotta remember <laughs> how I did this the first time. So first, you're gonna become Bulmon. Yep. And then from Bullmon, he's still kind of like, um, sort of just kind of running around a bit, like pumping himself up. And then like, um, he sort of like front end kind of extends up into like an actual like humanoid like torso. 
um, sprouts some arms, kind of reaches in from, like, I guess, hammer space. That's probably where they come from. Pulls out two big swords. It's a sword Ooh. space. Lifts them up. Yes. Oh! Oh! Look how, look how smiley it is. Oh, that's so cool! Can you do something about that bear up, bitch like... rift here? It's very cold out. Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give it your best shot then. And that's going to be Eleanor's cue to uh, direct for, I think I would like for it to be accuracy. All right, you've got a plus seven to your next accuracy ch- check. And okay. then Eleanor's going to get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> Eleanor has a movement of four, so go right ahead. <laughs> One, also, two, look how small Galgamon is in compared to all four. the other beasts you might. Galgamon's a little one. Yeah. A, a small crown Galgamon. <laughs> Gold crown Galgamon. Uh, Shioko and Clive. Alright. Jake is like, well, he's probably, he's probably gonna. He's like, what, what do you want to do? I think. I need you to be very, very careful, okay? All right, I can do that. As long as you're um, careful as well. Okay. Uh, and Clive is going to digivolve into Gatomon. All right. Gatomon is now in the field. That's my friend. That's my friend. Boogie, boogie, boogie. Um, <laughs> and Joker has two simple actions. Clive has one. I think what Clive is going to do first is uh, he is going to use... Hold on, let me just see if this makes sense. Okay, yeah, he's going to do it. All right, so what he's going to do is he's going to use one of his moves on Chiyoko. Uh Um, He's going to use uh, Defend Order on Chiyoko. Um, So it's... uh, Gives a uh, vigilance status effect, um, yep. and user gains dodge and armor equal to bit value. Okay, uh, so it's roll a attack roll for applying this. All right, so that's gonna be roll uh, sixty six greater than five. Six. Is Chioko bolstering you on the uh, directing you on this, or are you just using it? Uh, I um, don't. I could, yeah. <laughs> Do it. Depends if you want uh, Chioko's accuracy boost on this. All right. Yeah. So the the thing with the thing with Accu is Clive's Accu is really good. Okay. Um, Cl- uh, Clive's armor as Gatomon is Garbo. I think I'll I think I'll give it to you as a dodge roll. Okay. Okay. So Chioko's applying a direct. Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, for, for dodge, dodge later. So remember that you've got a plus six to your next dodge roll. Okay. Sixty-six. Five. Fuck. Okay, it's gonna last All one right. turn, I guess. Uh, Chioko has to roll dodge against this. Right, and that's... Um... Wow, Chioko's dodge stat! <laughs> I've got a 10 dodge! Jeez. Oh, boy. Ooh, is that, is that 10d6, then? <laughs> yep. Oh. Greater than 5. Oh, I don't know, that seems... I don't know how I feel about that rule. <laughs> Yeah, the rules are Fuck made for running. dealing with uh, status effects being very powerful, but it does feel a bit weird in use. I'm sorry, I forgot Shoko's dodge. Was, I made her so that she could stand there and like give directions, and things would maybe not hit her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm like Lucky, who was just, just there to punch. I think it might be worth home brewing the like the buffing and debuffing <laughs> rules. Yeah, yeah, I'll give a consideration to this, but I don't want to change it in the middle of playing right now. Yeah, yeah no, fair that's enough. Fair, fair enough. Darn okay. it. Well, uh, so you've each got one simple action left. Um. <sighs> Just as an aside, even though I know it's like a circuit board, I cannot look at Eno Kibamon and not see that as like Yu-Gi-Oh! Millennium Idol items background. Mm. But I think that's just that's kind of nerd I am. Um, no, I see it too. 
technically I could go in there and fight because I do have some some points in fight, but also You also have three wound boxes. Yeah. <laughs> and dodge is great, but I can only be hit for three hits. So um Choco's probably gonna back away a little bit to stand with Eleanor. But if anything happens to Gautamon, she's gonna run in there. If anything happens to Clive. And what's she will Clive go hand. Uh, I already used both of his actions, so he's done for the Alright, he's involved in that. Okay. So we are up to the Mammothmon. Each of the three Mammothmons is now going to move. Their movement is nine. And you hear the ogre, ice ogre on the back of the one in the forward give commands and the other two start moving in response to those. So that is one. Wait, how are, how many, I guess it's still the same number of spaces even if you're huge. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nine. Uh, this one's going to move as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, this one that the Hagamon is on the back on, since Galgamon ran up on it, it's just going to focus on it. So let's start with this one in front of Galgamon. All right. which is going to start a uh, Tusk Charge, which is Charge Parse Armor Piercing. So let's roll that. Oh boy! Ooh, any specific bonuses I need to add to this? Nope, okay. Wow. Yikes. Okay, so this thing is charging forward. Uh, Galgamon evades as it charges forward, and it's because of charge, because of the pass modifier, that lets it just keep moving through targets, and so it charges right up to where Vajramon is, and I guess isn't able to get to Vajramon. I mean, it's like Tusk flashed against your swords and you stop it from charging. Yeah. Kind of it blocks it. Okay. Uh, the one on the side of Galgamon is going to use. Yeah, Galgamon was probably just like wiggling his little scarf, like go lay when it charged past him. All right. Aww. So the one over here digs its trunk into the ice and hurls up this big ball of snow, and then it throws that right at Galgamon. Oh boy. So roll dodge against that. All right. So what was the um the dodge modifier? You got a plus 4. Plus 4. Oh, All right. Nice. And I do have um agility, so if any of these come up as ones, I can reroll them. So you have dodge plus 5? Well, I'm saying there's an additional plus 4 from my that was the one I did. All right. Yeah, yeah. Four successes. I don't even have to re-roll those two ones. I don't... Yep, yep. Okay. Just like throws an ice ball and Gargamon just hops to the side again and dodges that one too. The ball hits where you are, but some of the ice splatters over the Digimon that's right next to you as well and kind of shifts its wing and brushes that off. Uh, this one, which has moved up as well, is going to use... Tusk charge specifically against Inukibamon. So it's one more roll. One success. Okay, let's see. What is Inukibamon's ability to dodge? Four. Sweet. <laughs> uh. Um, D6. And then it's the greater than five symbol? Yep. Okay. Damn, you guys are doing well. This thing charges up on your Kibamon and just slams into it and does significantly nothing. Nice. All right. The Digimon on the back of the Mouthmon that charged up on Vajramon. Oh, wait. I just realized uh, something. Yep. Uh, 
I shouldn't have rolled that many dice, because I'm apparently berserk. Which means I had minus two to accuracy slash dodge. That's a point. Although... Okay, re-roll that. Yeah, I was like... I forgot. I'm pissed. Actually... I also forgot about Berserk. It's tricky to keep track of. 2d6 plus 1. Hey! That's high! Uh, that's still enough to counter it out, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I think I think so... on defense meeting it's enough, right? Yeah. Okay. So the Ice Ogre, which is on the back of these all, sees this entire deal going on, and it just gives this howling call as it just challenges you all, like, Come on! And it roars out and sends out a cone, which is going to pick up Vajron, Inukibamon, and Zen. So let's roll Taunting Yell. Oh boy. Don't worry, guys. I got a whole 2d6 to roll here. On defense. Alright. Now I need each of you to roll dodge on that. I believe in you guys. Dodge, dodge. Okay. Hey, a success. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good with only two dice. Oh, oops. Hold on. You dropped a slash. Yeah. Mm, I know how that goes. I forget stuff all the time. <laughs> Oof. Damn. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm just looking all over my stuff. Badrimon has a lot of shit going on. So I'm just like making sure that... Yeah. Oh um, no, Zed. <laughs> Vajramon's dodge is sick. Yeah, oh, I'm just making have sure he doesn't. That. I'm just making sure he doesn't have anything else that would like affect this because he's got stuff going on. But I you've don't... got resistance, but that only applies when it's affecting you. Yeah, so I guess it's just so six roll your dodge first. Yep. Yeah, I'm just. Trying to okay. keep track of all my stuff. So you are taunted for one round. Because uh resistant doesn't lower it more than one round. Doesn't lower it beyond below one round. Yep. Okay. The taunt effect is that the target takes an accuracy penalty for attacking anyone who is not the user of the taunt effect. Equal to the user's CPU value times two for the duration of this effect. Uh Yep, okay, sure. So you guys have a minus four to accuracy if you're attacking someone that isn't this guy in the back of the mammoth. Right. And after doing that... What else are you going to do, bud? He's going to do change into a defensive stance. <laughs> and in defensive stance, uh, Hayugomon's accuracy is halved, but its dodge is doubled. It's in Hayugomon's turn. Ice Devimon, who is also right up in front of Inukibamon, but also noticed Galgamon has been dodgy to the side of it, is going to reach out with an ice. T Let's see. Uh, so since I, I just want to confirm, since I rolled one success against the three, that means that I have the status for two turns, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. And I guess that status doesn't really affect Zen, because Zen's not really likely to run up and punch a Digimon. And you were affected by an attack. Does that, is that, uh... The thing says... Uh, that's I, plus one rage when hit by an attack, so oh, add that, one is, rage. Is that, is that count as getting hit? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's an attack that hits you successfully. And you were taunted, oh, yeah. especially. So I think plus one rage for that. I'm pissed. Yeah, I also, um, I also have, um, no, 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 never mind. You, uh, were you looking at combat it. monster? Yeah, but that. Uh, yeah, there's damage no damage specifically. I think that's why I was thrown off. Ooh, my so God. Hannah, mm -hmm. Ice Devimon reaches out towards Galgamon just mm -hmm. with a long, spindly fingered hand. That's kind of glowing with ice magic. Roll dodge against this. Do I still have the bonus or no? Uh, you've already rolled dodge once. All right, so let's just back down to um, five. Okay. 
And none of those are ones, so I can't reroll them. Yep. Also, this thing has three ranks and seven strike, so that is for three turns. Galgamon is charmed. Oh no! <laughs> mm. What does that do? The user takes control of the target's actions for the duration of this effect. However, for the duration of this effect, the user must use two simple actions per round in order to maintain combat. So okay. that'll kick in after this. I but see. on your next turn, this thing is going to be deciding what you're doing. And after that, Ice Devimon uses its flight to move eight. So about... Actually, it just moves over and settles on the back of this mammoth here. It's just the puppet master that's cursed by Dick, I see. Oh no! Stella and Bergamon. Oh boy. <laughs> oh. Stella doesn't like any of this. Um, she kind of looks at Bergamon like, Oh, what do you want to do? Uh, Bergamon slowly, like, clone high hands, raises a burger into the frame. He <laughs> <laughs> wants to burg and nudges it up to Stella. Um, uh, she will take the burger. Thank you. I think I should digivolve. Um, good idea. Um, is he gonna like double digivolve? Or... Uh, do you? What's... Might be a good time for it. Um, cause I... if. He is gonna like use both his actions to do that. Stella is gonna like, um, she can like kind of pick him up and sort of either carry him into the fray or just like toss him toss over. Toss him? Oh my god, that's yeah. Yeet. Okay, okay, here we go. Yeet. Um, okay, that... Stella, uh, give me uh, feats of strength, and we'll use that to determine how far you can move Bergamon. Feats of strength. Okay, so that's body plus. Yeah, three d six plus eleven. Yeah. God, I love Stella's stats. So, God. Uh, that's a good throw. All right, uh, where do you want Bergamon to go? <laughs> Pick a location. Now, I'm, just, I'm just imagining now, like, what would happen if Stella and Lucky met, because they're both the, the, the strong throw type. Um, all right, so all right, Bergamon so... has been sent flying. Yeah, so can I, so is that pretty much just, like, anywhere? Um, well, I'm not going to let you move too far, but, like, if you... Where do you want Bergamon to go, specifically? Where were you aiming to put it? Mount the last man. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, what do you think, Bridge? Where um, did you eat this Berg? <laughs> I feel like it wouldn't make sense for you to be able to throw... Wait, can you throw Bergamon just over, uh... What's this dude's name? The Hyogamon's head? Is you can definitely possible? throw Bergamon up that high. Like, with that strength check, I'll give oh! that. What if... What <laughs> if... You want to throw Bergamon right in this Hyogamon's face? Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you that. Yes. <laughs> Bravo! Okay. Secret technique unlocked. So, Big city slide. Bergamon, as Bergamon soars through the air, yeeted by Stella, it digivolves twice? Yeah, can I kind of... Oh, walk through this digivolution. Oh, Please. yes, I'm Please so do. excited. So as... Okay. First, we have Pyro Bergamon, so... Yeah. Uh, definitely, it is still Bergamon. It is Bergamon that you are launching. And I think, like, just with how far Stella is able to throw Bergamon, Bergamon, like, tucks his little legs in and arms and, like, starts <laughs> somersaulting through the air. And, it's like... <laughs> just kind of bursts into flames and you guys see uh it's his form expand and like it's still spin doing us he's still doing a somersault but you can see kind of like the big um oh god what's the, the big spatula like it's holding it in his hand uh and flames are just now racing off of bergamon as he's soaring through the air but right before he kind of impacts with Hugamon, you see a like the flames grow intensely hot, and two giant wings burst out of the oh back God. of this new form, and uh, the flames brighten one more time and then recede, and you see Fieri Dramon. 
Yeah! I knew it! I knew it! I knew this is where this was going! I'm so happy! <laughs> Bravo! This is wonderful! It's so Diners, good. dive bombs, and Dramon. Um, and I guess, I don't know, does Fiery Dramon Fiery like Dramon at full size lands, basically clawed feet top on top of the mammoth mon's head, looking down at Hyogamon, who's on its back. Uh, burning frying pan in hand. Points his burning frying pan. I'm taking you to Flavor Town, motherfucker! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, bless. <laughs> this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Stella, you have one more simple action. Oh god. Um. <laughs> okay. Um. I guess. Um. She's gonna. I assume she's in range to like direct Fiery Jamon, like um. Uh, what's his your next charisma attack? Mode? Four. If you directed before you sent, uh, if you like, gave directions as you were getting Bergamon ready to throw, but uh, uh, they're out of your reach now. They would have been before you threw them. Uh, okay. Um, should have thought about that. Um, she's gonna. In that case, she's kind of going to move over here with, like, these two. Um, right. Stella's protecting Eleanor and Shoko. Yeah, in some sense. big, strong way. arms. <laughs> yeah, she does have big, strong arms. She's just All proven right. that. Zen and Inukibon. Hmm. I don't like where my boy's at. Uh, sandwiched between these two mammoth mons. Um. Dog is pissed. Dog is pissed. Dog is mad. Hmm. I'm trying to think how Zen can uh, help. Zen's also kind of pissed, too, right? Taunted. <laughs> yeah, Zen got yelled at by Hagumon and. So it's a penalty to accuracy rolls, which you're not really doing attacks, but you still got you still got yelled at by this thing. Yeah, but I don't like that. Um, hmm. I think Zen's just gonna try and do bolster, uh, or try to bolster you to keep him on, um, unless there's something that would. Mm, you make tell me what you want to do. Hmm. I'm just an angry dog right now. I'm probably pissed at the ogre. Uh, what kind of readings uh, is Zen getting off the Digivice now that Inukibamon's also, like, even more angry than before? Uh, you... So the Digivice usually lets you track a Digimon the Digimon link to you status, so you're able to tell it's still, like, healthy and ready to go. But you do notice that uh, as you look down, so the circuit pattern across... The Screen has kind of just faded in like it's there but it's not too obvious but you notice there's just this slight line that leads off the screen and over the physical casing of the digivice itself it's also kind of just the tiniest little bit of circuit pattern which seems to be stretching off the screen over the device hmm. um can i hack my own digivice can you hack your own digivice you can give me a computer roll to try Uh, you set in, and it's, this is not like a easy job, this is not something that's going to go in an instant, but you immediately can tell that there's some sort of link, well, the, there's the link between Inu Kibamon and your Digivice, of course, because your Digimon partner is linked through the Digivice, but you can tell there's an active and consistent data flow that's going back and forth between the two, like, more so than is normal. Hmm. Huh. So you Do immediately, I still... yep. Oops, sorry. Do I Go still ahead. have another action? Yeah, you've got two simple actions. Um, I'm going to bolster Inakibamon's. I guess, what do you think's best, man? Uh, accuracy? 
probably accurate. Like, if, if I get a little madder, I'm going to have no dice for dodging at all, so boosting that doesn't seem like a great move. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, can I kind of flavor it like a Zed? I don't know if this works with what Zed now can do with what she can do with the Digivice, but is it like, if there's a data flow, Zen's thinking, well, can I like... Overclock the dog. Yeah, can I overclock the dog? Or can I attempt to manipulate it? Over dog. Okay, right, um, that's fine. I'll give you that for... So you've done a uh, direct for, you know, keep them on. Which has given it your plus three charisma to its next uh, accuracy. Okay. I think I explicitly... Keep them on. Two simple actions. I'm, I'm pissed, so I think I have to go for that dude. Yep. Like, I mean, I know if technically... If you don't target Hyogamon, it is uh, minus four to accuracy. I say, wait, wait, I, I do have one question about that, because I was skinning the yep. rules in between turns, so I couldn't find it for sure. If it's an attack that targets it and something else, what does that do? Uh, let me see what it says. Because I, I couldn't find that. But I might just not have known where to look. Uh, for attacking anyone who's not the user of this, if the attacker uses an area attack which has the user as a target, instead takes a penalty of the user's CPU minus two for the accuracy roll. And I have no idea... Wait, of its CPU or my CPU? Uh, of the users. Yeah, is that the user of the status or the user of yeah, the Yeah, that's attack? a good question. Uh, my CPU minus two is zero, so I'm just going to say no penalty if you use an okay, area attack. Then I'm going to use the attack Big Bork, which is <laughs> a cone. Except it's a very angry Bork. And yep. since it's a cone, I'm pretty sure I can aim that so it doesn't hit my allies. I mean, he's not, not that he cares, but I'm pretty sure if he aimed straight at the ogre, he wouldn't hit his allies. I don't know. It's up to you to decide who I actually hit with this, because you know, keep Mons just angry. We'll see uh, how it goes with Fear Angel Mon. Okay, let's see. My accuracy is six, but I'm pissed, so my accuracy is actually only three. Uh, what's the oh, no. length of the cone? It's I think it's three, three meters. Uh, with how tall the Mammoth Mon is, I think Fear Angel Mon's just out of this. Also, I just realized it's not just 3d6, because I was... I was guided, so it's actually 66. Let's go. Here goes Big Bork. I forgot to do the thing, but that's two of them. Greater than five, so that is two successes. Yeah, I forgot to do I, I realized as I hit enter, like, oh, right, there's a thing okay. I should do there. You're at three berserk points, right? Yes. Because yeah. that, yeah. Because I, right. I should be down to three, but then the charisma boost brought me back up, so... Pogemon's dodge is... You said it was defensive, so it's better than normal, right? Alright, yeah, because it did the um, defense stats. Still only one success, so that's going to hit that one. And as for the Mammothmon, your dodge is five. That's better than I thought it would be. <laughs> Three successes. So it just tanks. So <laughs> it doesn't affect the Mammothmon, but the Big Bork reaches up to where Hyogamon is. And how much damage does it do? Let's see, that that's... I add one to whatever it is, right? Because there's one success that rolled over. Um, my damage yep. is five, but I'm at rage three, so that would be like eight, right? Yep. And then plus one more? Yep. And then... So that's nine points? Yes. But that also is a successful yes. attack, so my rage goes up. So... <laughs> I'm a mad dog. All right, so nine points of damage, right? Nine or ten? Yes, nine. Nine. Okay. Uh, Hogemon's armor is nine, so it takes one point of damage. Don't worry, guys. Once I get madder, I'll hit harder, but less accurately. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need Zen. All right. Uh, you've got one more action. In the uh, yeah, I guess I do have another action. Um, sh can, can, I don't think I can reach it with a bite. It's up high. Well, screw it. I'm pretty sure there's almost no way this will hit, but I'm going to bite at the mammoth because it's in the way. All right. Give me an attack roll. Uh, and this one is actually, since that was a successful hit, this is now 2d6. Listen, I'm angry. Well. Oh. 
But wait, right. don't I take a don't I take a penalty for not attacking the guy? Oh right. So do I roll no attacks? I'm just attacking fruitlessly. Uh, taunt is penalty for attacking anyone who's not the user of CPU times two. Yeah, that's a minus four to accuracy. So I actually roll two negative dice. Yeah, unfortunate. Okay. So he's trying Derek to bite and it. Derek and Galgamon. Well, not. I'll deal with Galgamon. Derek, what are you doing? Yeah, Inokagamon's trying to bite the mammoth and failing. <laughs> he's a frothy boy right now. Okay. Derek is going to look back at Galgamon. Totally didn't see that he got charmed. But he can't really help from this distance anyway, so he is literally just going to scoot further away. Listen. People have skills. Being in a fight's not one of Derek's. Alright. Although Galgamon, he actually probably has decent stats for fighting. Under Ice Devimon's direction, is now going to use Spiral Blow, which is a range attack. Nope, not with close combat as not. It is going to move up and use Double Claw. Galgamon moves up and does a new so attack. sorry. Which is, it's got a close combat bonus, so that is 9d6 accuracy. Uh huh, and it does have huge power and overkill. Hmm. So, right. uh, does oh, Inu yeah. Kibamon have a dodge? Uh, no. Inu Kibamon has no dodge anymore. But does uh, this yeah, it's four minus four. But does this attack so, have armor piercing? All right, I gotta I, reroll I my one and two. So one, two, three of those to reroll. Yeah, none of these have armor piercing. Luckily, uh, Galgamon did not digivolve right. a second time, or we would be dealing with armor piercing. Four successes plus damage is 12 points. I have 13 armor, so... So you take one point of damage. And I get madder. <laughs> and you get madder. <laughs> Listen. In Inukimon is literally frothing right now. All right. It's like I poked you in the side uh, and you're just like... Yeah. So you moved once, you've still got one more simple action if you want to do anything with that. Uh, I'm not sure what you could do, but... He's just going to be looking at Galgamon like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> just... And that was an entire action to say, wait, what the fuck? All right. Eleanor and Vajramon. <sighs> okay. Uh, do you remember that you are taunted to this high Ogamon? Yep. Yeah, um, on to us. Can I assume that, like, it's, like, precise spot on the map is, like, it's, like, exact range away from... So I can assume that it's actually like a full like meter or whatever. Or is it just kind of like yeah, you're right up on it. You don't have to move to do a melee attack. Or even on the um, the Hyogamon. Oh no, the Hyogamon is on the back yeah, that... of the Mammothmon, and you're not quite tall enough to reach up on that. Okay. Uh, if you um... use a jump move, I'll let you <laughs> get an attack on that. Um, Vajramon does have, you have reach. We'll okay, if you got reach, it. you can get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, One okay, reach is yeah, that's, yeah, that's just what I, what I wanted to ask first off. I think um, he's actually going to use... Um... Or could I also hit it with like a range... Well, not with a range, like an area attack. Yeah. Would that also hit it? Yep. Yeah, so I think he's going to use his... Um... Rhoda attack, which hits in a line to hit both like the Mammothmon and you can yep. angle up through the Mammothmon. <laughs> and I okay. think in the distance, so... Eleanor is uh, yelling, um, "You go get him, Vajramon! You you show him what's what." Yeah. Oh, all right. So it's pretty much he like is slams long his... enough to reach with a uh, direct. Wait, so, what? what was that? So Eleanor could do a direct for that if you want. Eleanor has a better charisma. <laughs> has a better range yeah. on that. Yep. So do you want to direct? Yep. Alright. Or accuracy. So you add a plus seven to your next accuracy. Well he already he already had a plus seven to his next. Oh right. Oh he had an attack, attack yeah. Right, time. yeah. Okay, it doesn't stack. Can you put both on at once? No. Alright. So go uh, ahead and make an attack roll. Just say right, it after yeah, the first just... attack. <laughs> I'm just uh, okay. Let me see. Let me figure out exactly what is going on here. Um, 
like accuracy wise. Oh, I just realized. Next time I need to remember to fill out for all of you guys uh, the notes I put on my things. You see the notes you've got on Inukibamon, Andy? Yes. They're useful. Yeah, I just added, I just, thanks to those notes, I just remembered to add one to the combat ma monster stat. Oh, I forgot all about combat monster. I mean, you only did. Well, it, this is the first time you took damage, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay so, um, all right, let me figure this out. Base accuracy is six. Um, You've got close combat, so add two. Yep, so it's eight. Plus the direct, that's a plus seven, right? It's gonna be so like that's 15. 15. Is that all of it? That's all of it. All of it, okay. So 15d6. Greater God. than five. Yeah, anything right. that re-rolls those ones? Uh, no, I don't think so. Bummer. Alright, let's roll some dodges. 8d6 greater than 5 for Yorgamon. Which evades that attack. Oof. And 5d6 greater than 5 for Mammothmon. Who also oh, evades that attack. come on! Vajron pulls back an attack, but the Mammothmon is kind of moving around a lot with Fury Dramon on it, and it manages... I, get, I think it more like stomps heavy, which throws Vajramon's attack off more than any. Eleanor, All right, Vajramon now, has one more attack. Eleanor, now yeah, use your direct. Um, yeah, direct this one, maybe. Eleanor? I don't, I don't think I can, I don't think I can direct twice in a turn, well, no, but, but your first you direct wouldn't have done anything, because Vajramon is already under the direct from, from They already had the direct benefit turn. from last turn. So you have both your actions still. Right. Okay, so I think Eleanor is going to want to take a look around to see how she help at all. Because mm -hmm. I think she, based on what happened last time with the Moosemon, um, she has realized that talking things through is not an option. Um, I think the first thing she's going to want to do is going to be to try to check for uh, the red metal on any of them now that they're closer up, uh, particularly right. on the Hyogamon and the Devimon, but still looking out for the Mammothmon. Uh, give me a general perception check. All right, so that's us roll. It's... And uh, you gave you gave a direct uh, accuracy for Vatramon. So yeah. what's Vatramon's other attack going to be? Um, I think he's gonna um. He's going to use, like, Reach to hit, um, the Hyogamon with, um, his, uh, Baljian. All right. So, because you've got a pointed weapon, that's 16 Fuck. d6. 16. Oh, boy. Uh, Eleanor looks out, but she does not spot any signs of pulsing uh... or glowing red metal on any of these. Before I before we see, set that in stone, how does inspiration? Because we all start with one, right? Uh, inspiration. Yep, you start with one, and then you get one for every successful torment check. Uh, let's see. Spend one inspiration to reroll a single dice. Wow. So you oh, well, roll I'll one of those it. ones. Yeah. Well, okay. So I'm rolling sixteen d six. Yep. Um. Hold on. Does reach like affect? the accuracy at all no also i need to remember that there is because it, it says in here it like takes a penalty to accuracy there as if go. it was a ranged attack melee attacks take a penalty to accuracy as if they were ranged attacks basically right so that was if you were right directly up in it but you're not attacking it at close range with a recruit. oh no that's if far range thing don't worry about that Okay, uh, so fine, some that. Okay, so yeah, sixteen. Yeah. Go ahead. Still. Now, where's the details on the multiple lot of attacks successes. in a round? <laughs> My roll's an eighteen now. Okay, uh, Eleanor, you look out, but you don't see any signs of the flashing red metal like there does seem to be on Inukibamon. <laughs> so I nice. got it, but they don't. 
Is there anything else I notice while I'm looking at the, like anything that stands out about the Digimon that we're fighting? About the Digimon? Yeah, because I was looking for the traces of the red metal on them, but did I notice anything while looking at it? Uh, nothing really stands out about these Digimon that are on the attack against you. Okay. To be honest. Where is the ruling for getting attacked multiple times in a turn? Because that... There's a thing about that where it makes it easier to hit the more it happens. Oh, right, there is. Uh... I'll help you find it. Thanks. Well, I'll do that. You rolled oh. seven successes. So. Whenever a character is yeah. attempting to dodge more than one attack per round, they take a stacking minus one penalty to their dodge pool for every attack past the first. It disappears at the start of a new round. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so I should reduce it. Man, there are so many rules that... That just okay, don't come up this. often, and then they yeah. certainly are important. I'm going to go with this, that uh. you've... Oh, wait, no, sorry, I rolled for Mammothmon. I shouldn't have rolled that, because it was just Hyogamon. Yeah. All right, so you got a successful um, hit on Hyogamon? Yeah, this attack also has certain strike. Yep, mm. so you negate. How many certain strikes does it have? Um, it's just one. What? Okay, so you negate one dodge. So two successes. So you got five successes plus your damage. Yeah, so damage is seven. Plus weapon for eight. Plus, yeah. Plus... Five successes for 13. And that's all of it. That's all of it? Okay, right. um, before so my thing, turn ends... Um, just a second, this thing has an armor of nine, so you've done four wound boxes of damage to it. All right. <clears throat> all right. Yeah, I just want to say before the end of my turn, um, he also has Flurry, which means he can... Yeah. Flurry would be modified by reach. So yeah, you've just got a regular basic attack. Yep, so he's going to have to hit Mammothmon, I assume. Yeah. Uh, it can be benefited by close combat, I believe. Turn me off. You can add tags or qualities, which are not tags to static, and affect every attack the digital makes, such as combat opposition. Yeah, you can add close combat to that. So do an 8d6. But it's, wait, it says... You cannot add tags or qualities which are not tagged as static and affect every attack the Digimon makes, such as close combat optimization. Oh, uh, so that means it which means does close combat right. is one that would work with it. Yeah. yeah. That's a confusingly word. I know. But... <laughs> yeah, basically all your passives still work. Yeah. Um, so God, what am I rolling now? What was it? 8d6. 8d6. Okay. It's the same kind of benefit. Ooh, nice. Ooh. No dice. Uh, unfortunately, this one evades. Okay. It was a good turn for Vajramon. Chioko and Clive. So, first off, Great. I want to say that Clive is very nervous. Uh, Clive finds strength in numbers, and the fact that we've got one berserk dog another charmed dog and they're fighting each other along with Zen going absolutely bananas <laughs> and most of the other like most of the Digimon they're fighting are completely unhurt has him extremely nervous uh, so he's gonna sort of glance at Chioko and nod um, and he's going to go to his ultimate form <sighs> also Vajramon your one turn of taunt is over so you're yeah. not taunting anymore yeah. All right. Give me Clive's Digivolution to Ultimate. All right. So Clive is. Um, did I show? Wait. Uh, did I show you? No, you didn't. Oh, <laughs> I don't think. I don't think Chioka's. I don't know if. I don't know if Chioka's. Well, we can decide after if Chioka's ever seen it before. So I think what uh, he's gonna do is he's gonna. Uh, basically, first he's gonna like sort of glow, grow in size, um, but stay cat-like in shape, but also become a humanoid. Uh, his tail sort of, the fluffy bits of his tail sort of get longer, and wings sprout from his back, and uh, he's enveloped in this like 
light purple light that sort of forms a cocoon around him before it sort of uh, pixelates away. And there is uh, Nyanjimon. Oh! Oh. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! A blessing. It's adorable! Oh, Slime is adorable! I like the ear wings. Me Thank too, you. that's... A... Oh, he's so cute! How tall is Nyanjumon? Uh, probably a tiny bit taller than Chiyoko. Oh! What a tiny ultimate. <laughs> perfectly, perfectly hug-sized. Yes, Chiyoko's just, that. like, clapping. Alright. What will Clive do? Clive And is... Chiyoko has two simple actions. Right. Um, if you're going to, before, like, uh, are you going to attack? Because I yes. will direct you with an accuracy yeah. roll. Alright, cool. I will be attacking. She's just, like, cheering. That's her direction. She's like, go! Uh, that definitely pumps Clive up because he really does well with positive reinforcement. <laughs> Carrot, not Baby stick. Boy. Love that. Alright, so... Um, Clive is going to take careful aim at the Hyogamon because he does not like that taunt at all. Um, and he is going to use, uh, he is going to use an attack called, well, you'll find out what it's called later. So he raises, uh, his non, um, his sort of non, uh, gloved paw. Uh, where his bow is, and then he sort of snaps with his other hand best he can with having no thumbs. Um, and an arrow of light appears, and uh, he's going to use his attack, Mielestial Nyaro. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he's going to fire it at uh, the Hyogamon. All right. Give me a roll for that. All right, so that's going to be, um, that's going to be, uh, I have seven accuracy naturally, so it's going to bump me up to 14, right? Uh, is Choco's Charisma seven? My oh, Choco's Charisma. 13. Oh, okay, so it's 13 D6. Yep. Yosh. Greater than five. This is Tagani Hyogamon in the back. Oh, fuck's sake. Yes. Do you have any rerolls? Uh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Fuck um, me running. Jesus. Defensive stance makes things hard to hit. Damn it. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, Chioko, you've got one simple action left. Um, hmm. What can I do with this? I've forgotten the actions I can take. I know I can move. Um... She'd honestly run in there and start fighting herself if these things weren't, like, huge, so tall. Very big. <laughs> yeah. If these were, like, smaller Digimon, she'd just run in there. She has a sword. But, um... <laughs> hmm, what can I do? Um... What other actions can a human take? I've forgotten, unfortunately. <laughs> There's not a super lot of things you can do. Uh, you could use a skill check or an item if you have a skill check or item you think can benefit. Um, skill check. Or it, when you were doing the directing, you could have bolstered your direct, which would have added an extra two to it. Oh, I forgot I could do that. Um, but it's if probably... If you want to put that back, Maddie, I'll literally roll two more dice. Yes, sure. please. Okay. So, Chioka spends a full round cheering for Nyanjamon. Yeah, she's just so hype. Ooh, two more rolls. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Attempt was made. The Mammothmon's turn. The Mammothmon carrying Ice Devimon circles further around here and 
holds back as Ice Devimon on the back of it just is puppeting its hands over Galgamon. Uh, this Mammothmon behind Inukibamon is just going to go for the attack again because that is what your uh, Yogamon took command of it to do. So it will. Move the uh, yeah, it's gonna move this way and it's gonna attempt a tusk charge to head through you guys again. No, it's not gonna move, it's just gonna try and swing down its tusks. It's very interesting, this very bark dog that's going on here. He did use large board. All right, accuracy check is just a basic 66. All right. Can Inukibumon dodge? Oh no, not even a little bit. I think I think Inukibumon is in the negative dodge. All right, two plus damage is seven points of damage. What's your armor? Uh, at the moment, fourteen. All right, I've got three ranks in armor piercing, so you've got, so you still only take one point of damage from that. And now my armor increases again. <laughs> yep. Now you get madder. Sometimes you're just a mad dog. Chasing cars. All right, you're at. You take one wound box of damage. You're at ten of twelve wound boxes and six of twelve rage. And plus two to combat monster if I can ever hit a thing. It's true enough. Plus two to combat monster. Thank you for keeping track of that. All right, uh, this one noting the. I mean, it hits you. That's good. <laughs> and then it. Gives a uh, trumpeting call and uses herd charge, which is a burst effect. Ranged burst is two plus bit, so six. So it's going to get Mammothmon, Hyogamon. It's also going to get Vatramon, Zen, Inukibamon, and Galgamon because they're all in range, and I do not believe this thing has. The black magic one or whatever it's called? No, it's the target-specific one. All right, so um, let me do a roll for this. Straight accuracy, 66. Four successes. Okay, uh, everyone who's going to be affected by this is going to get swiftness. That is bonus to dodge and accuracy equal to the user's bit value. Well... That hits me completely because I can't dodge it. But it does. Inukibamon has a plus four to dodge and accuracy. Wait, is it plus four, four or is it just for four, four turns? turns? Nice. No, it is, it's plus four for four turns. Its bit is four. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Now, Galgamon has a dodge of five. Mm -hmm. So try and dodge this because you don't know what's happening. Galgamon has swiftness for three turns. This Mammothmon over here has a dodge of five. If I can type right. I cannot. This is accuracy and dodge, right? Which one? The, yeah, the yeah, you strategy. get plus four to dodge and accuracy. Okay, I was just adding it to my notes so that I don't I remember it in future four turns for you. And Hyogamon, who also gets caught in that, has a dodge of eight because they're in their defensive stats. Has two turns of swiftness. This is about to get interesting. Uh, the last Mammothmon. Uh, Hyogamon, on the back of it, is going to use an action to turn back to its regular stance, so no more double dodge halved accuracy. And it's going to use... What do you what do you attack with, bud? You're basically in melee with um, Fury Dramon on the back of this thing. So let's just use Ice Club. So I got a plus one weapon, so that is seven accuracy plus swiftness for 11 accuracy. All 
All right. Fury Dramon, roll dodge. Uh, okay. There is literally no way it can fully dodge, but... Was Fearmon not in range of the inspiring trumpet thing? It was just short. Okay. Hyogamon was at the edge of it, and Fearmon, who's right up with Hyogamon. They're both on the back of this mammoth mod. Woohoo! Alright, seven successes, plus its damage, which is also weapon boosted for 14 points, reduced by your armor. Which is three. Alright. So that's 11 points of damage. Holy fucking shit. Well, I have one wound box left. Oh no! <laughs> Dang. I mean, let's be real. I rolled incredibly on that. That's six sixes and two fives. That is a crazy good roll. Taurus yeah. over here trying to kill the party every game. <laughs> uh, the mammoth one with the two of you on the back uh, shuffles around. It's not able to move as well, but bearing the both of you, it's going to use just a non-moving charging task at Vajramon. I'm sorry. So it does have the bonus to that, so that's 10d6 for it. Alright. Vajramon, roll dodge. Roll dodge. No modifiers or anything. Don't I don't remember half the stuff. Yeah, I don't remember half the stuff my Digimon has is the problem. My dodge is six. Alright. So that is two points with this. Uh, what's your armor? Seven. Alright. So this thing does have armor piercing on this. So, uh... One armor, so uh, one plus its damage. You take six wound boxes. Six wound boxes. I have 15, that's okay. Yep. I have a question. Uh, so... Yep. Has Galgamon been attacked besides the charm thing? Nope. I didn't think so, but I wasn't sure. Alright, that's their turns used up. Stella! Stella! Um, she probably saw her body get walloped with a club over here. Yeah. It's a big piece of ice smacked over Fear Drummond's head, then melted into water and covered it. <laughs> Elementally oh, effective man. attack. Um, so she, is she in range for a direct now? Uh... You move before, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a direct on this. Okay. Um. Yeah, she's gonna direct him for a boost to his next dodge. Are you gonna do anything else, or are you gonna bolster your direct? Um. Yeah, bolster it. All right. So that is a plus six to your next dodge, Fairy Dramon. Okay. That's very useful. <laughs> All right, and your actions. Okay, I am going to attack. The Hugamon just hit me for a ton of shit. What's uh, your attack going to be? Uh, I'm, uh, so, Fairy Jamon kind of, like, grabs the, uh, the frying pan and, and overhand kind of grip and is swinging it around like a bat. And as he does so, uh, you see a, like, big ol', like, sausage slider burger pop up onto it, and then he's lobbing <laughs> it into Hugamon's mouth with its his uh, salami slam <laughs> uh, Just so you know, that's a range attack? Yeah, but I don't have many other options for attacking at the moment. My melee one does something I don't want to do. You've got another melee. Yeah, but it does nothing. It does it's just damage. Like a yeah, the point is, you're you're in melee range right now, which means uh, range attacks have a penalty. Uh, What's the penalty? Right. What is the penalty to range? Because it might still be worth it. Where's the section I wrote on range in my notes? Uh, 
I just love Derek being Let's way see. at the back, and I feel like he's holding his head in his hands because his dog's just going ham. A ranged attack targeting a character adjacent to the user takes an accuracy penalty equal to the target's ram. So if you're attacking Hyogamon with range, its ram is two, so you'd be taking a negative two to your accuracy. Yep, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, you got bolstered on accuracy, you know, you got bolstered on dodge. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. I have swiftness, which is accuracy and dodge. Yeah. So even though I turned back to my normal four dodge stance because of swiftness, I still have eight. Because that's status effects. <sighs> you huck the salami at Hyogamon, and Hyogamon just dodges around it. Hmm. All right. You got one more simple action. What's my current range for the up? Plus bit value plus one. Okay, I'm using uh my shield move then. Um, I can hit uh Inukibamon and Gaugamon with this. Yeah, it's selective targeting, so it won't affect your um enemies. Yep. Um. All right, guys, I'm giving you a one-stop ticket to Flavortown, which is the name of the move. Um, <laughs> Good. Wow, that. Uh, first is... I love two, this so that's much. a range of 10. <laughs> that's a 10 radius. You're basically picking up everyone with that. Oh, okay. Shit. Oh, jeez. I mean, it is a burst. Okay, it, it's so... It's Flavortown, in fact. Um, I don't want to deal with checking it, so basically... Each of you who's affected by this do a dodge roll, and for however many dodges you have less than four, you're going to get um, that many turns of... Wait, how's the shield work? Uh, so it's I bonus no health, I believe. Hold on, shield. Uh, they gain an amount of temporary wound boxes equal, equal to my to bit, bit value, Yeah. And okay. my bit value is eight. Ooh. Yeah, so you have that many turns of eight shielding on each of you. Oh, good lord. Okay. So is this everyone? It's pretty much everyone! Fyrgeron's in the perfect position to snap oh, up no, everyone. Uh, oh, no, shield doesn't go away. Temporary hit points are removed at the end of combat. Is that it? That's what shield yep. says. Okay, there you go. So it just has to affect. So if you roll less than four on this dodge, you just get uh, hey, eight I don't, Even with that plus four to dodge, I only have two dice, so I'm good. Uh, so does that hit the humans as well, or just the Digimon? The humans are in range, so it's going to hit them All right, too. I'll do Chiyoko first, then I'll do Gaugamon. Except it's time for a lot of dice rolls, guys. Yeah. Nope. I'm pretty sure Derek oh. might be out of range. By the way... Yeah, Derek's um, out of range, everyone else is in. This is only going to happen if uh, people get, get this ability, but I do have White Mage, so that'll prog if anyone gets the positive effect. Oh, four, that works, right? No, you gotta um, roll beneath four. You wanted to roll low. Ah, shoot, okay, it doesn't work on Shioko. Uh, Shioko rejects however, the Flavormon doctrine. She doesn't understand the Flavortown meme. <laughs> She's probably never, never heard of Guy Theory. That's tragic. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, and that's Galgamon, so Galgamon's got it. Galgamon gets plus one. I'm just gonna put this little heart on everyone who gets one. Alright, this is for Vardramon. Vardramon plus one shield. And uh, Stella. What's Stella? Um, okay, this is probably not gonna. Clive gets plus one shield. Yay! My beautiful baby boy. Strong. Oh, yeah, Stella. Stella gets plus two sh shield. Well, hang on. It doesn't even... The amount you beat it by doesn't matter. Because it just lasts. Stella could run in there and punch something now. She could. Like, <laughs> that's a still a bad idea, but she could. <laughs> yeah. Nope, that doesn't work. Got me in the front. 
Wait, I did it wrong. Uh, it's two successes. You get it. Okay. You know, I'm, even though it doesn't matter, I'm rolling Inumon's. None. <laughs> Inumon has eight points of shielding. That's smarter if I just write it down. Eight points. Okay, and then I'm activating a uh, white mage after Eleanor. Sorry, because I think that lost. Uh, you can do it, Maddie. <laughs> You'll get it. Oh, I got it. Okay. Uh, so how many people have shield right now? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, okay. Grandma is shielded. There we go. Eleanor has shield. So that if this lasts until the end people. of combat, then resistant doesn't affect it at all. Right? Yeah. Because it only affects the duration. So. Yeah. Okay, um, and this is your pull check? Okay. So yeah. you can heal two wound boxes of damage who among is, the team. Who is currently um, injured? Um, Vajramon could use that. Well, I mean, he's not in desperate need. Yeah, I'd say Inukibamon's hurt, but not nearly much, and he has a ton of armor, so probably not nearly Vajramon's at 9 of 15. Okay, um, let's put both of those on Vajramon, then. Alright, back up to 11, bud. Alrighty. Okay, and that is Stella and Fairytramon's turn done. Zen and Inukibamon. Wow, I feel so healthy. <laughs> Thanks to delicious food. Zen has gone from 4 to 12 wound boxes. <laughs> God. On the other hand, um, Ina Kibamon is currently at 18 of 20. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I guess I can maybe just bolster another directive. For 18 of 12, really. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, you can do a bolster direct if you want. Yeah. Um. Do you would you prefer accuracy or dodge? Uh, probably accuracy. I'm pretty sure I'm just yeah. designed to tank at this point. Let's do that. Um, Zen's gonna do the same thing. Try and uh overload or direct more data to you know keep him on. Okay. So you have a plus five to your next accuracy check. Okay. Zen, as you're just setting up for more data to flow back and forth between the Digivice, you notice that the circuit patterns are actively starting to spread from the screen across the entire Digivice now. Hmm, I don't like that, but we're going to have to take advantage of it while we can. Okay. So All right, Inu, keep them on. I have a total of plus nine right now because I also have Swift currently. Swift, so yep. that's, I have 15 to start, but then I lose six of them. So, nine. Uh, I think he's still just mad. He's just going to keep borking, because I think he also is still taunted, so. All right, so you're going after Hyogamon and Mammothmon again? Yes. All right, give me a roll. I said nine, right? Yep. Okay. So here comes more bork. That's not many. All I think right, I have, so I think I rerolled one, but I don't think I rerolled roll? Twos. Yeah, I only really uh, this ones. hits Hyogamon. So you've got one success. Then you add your damage to that. Uh, I have a question, real quick. Yeah. Um, for the combat monster, does that add it to everything this attack hits, or just the first thing this attack hits? Um. Good question. Because it just I'd says... say it adds to everything of the area attack. So I'm going to add that. Okay. So, so my plus attack, three to your damage. What's your damage? My damage is... Well, no, I, I think I only have plus two to my combat monster right now. I've only lost two. Yeah, damage. but you also got plus one for your success. Oh, yeah. Okay, so plus three. Uh, my rage meter's at six. So that's nine plus my damage. So that's 14. All right. Uh, Jogamon takes five points of damage. And I'm just very loud. <laughs> okay, and Mammothmon, who also, this specific Mammothmon, also got the swiftness bonus, so it's dodges nine. Which neutralizes it out. But um, the Hyogamon bit it really bad. It's still standing, but 
You definitely affected with that. Okay, you've got one more attack. One more have action. To, I have to raise my rage again. Yep, you hit an attack, so you get an extra point of rage. I'm guys, I'm very mad. I'm just giving that warning out right now. Uh and then you know what? I'm mad, but I also matter at that Yogamon than the thing, so I'm gonna try and use distracting Bork at it. Alright. Which uh, give me a roll on that. Let's see, my accuracy is six. I now have seven, so minus one, plus four, so three D six. But that is another attack coming at it, so at least its accuracy is worse or whatever. Def dodging things where I don't know what it is. I've been using that rule either way around. So well, far, it, that, doesn't pain, so. that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. This anything. thing's reeling from your last fork. It can't hear this next one. It was very loud. Its ears hurt. <laughs> yeah. All right. Derek and... Well, I'll take care of Galgamon. What's Derek doing? Shit. I don't know. Oh, also, that, that means my taunts wore off, right? That was two turns? That probably means your taunt wore off. I think it was two that hit me. Yeah, uh, your taunt is out, and the taunt on Zen is out. Okay. So Derek is way over there. I'm pretty sure his charisma is low enough that it... Actually, I have a question. Can you split out movement? Yeah. Okay. Do I want to bolster this charmed doggo? Uh, bolster range is 5 plus charisma, I believe. Yeah, but I have, like, 11 movement. I could get in, do it, and get right the hell yeah. back out. <laughs> right. But he's attacking the other dog. See, this is why you don't keep a bunch of dogs in the same area. They get territorial. Uh... <laughs> he's gonna, like, move two spaces forward. <laughs> And then he's, I'm gonna, I don't think I, there's actually a coded thing to do here, but that, uh, his action's gonna be just yelling at Galgamon, like, STOP BITING THE OTHER DOG! <laughs> I have no idea if that's uh... any kind of roll or if that's just whatever, but... I don't think there actually is a roll to try and stop a charm, but... Make a persuade roll for me. Okay, let's see what that is. Uh, persuade's charisma, I assume, right? Yep. Okay. Slash roll. Ooh. It's oh, wait, no, it's, it's, it's 3d6 it. plus 5. 3d6 plus Well, do you want to take the first three, or, I mean, like, they are pretty consistent across the board, or should I just... I'll do another roll. Yeah, that's what I figured. 3d6 plus 5. Works, but um, not. <laughs> fortunately, doesn't seem to have an effect. Galgamon's attack. Oh boy. Right up on. There's Galgamon. Right up on Inukibamon, and still just. Iced everyone is still just having an attack, because that's what you do. <laughs> Get it in there, and you go Galga Hound and double claw. So let's start with Galga Hound, which is. Got close combat on that, so that's just 96 on both of these. And you got huge power and overkill, so I reroll ones and twos. Don't worry, <laughs> guys. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, uh, roll dodge. I have a dodge. Let's see. Haha. <laughs> -ha. Nope. <laughs> Alright. So, two plus damage. For 10 points of damage, your armor is gigantic. So, one point of damage. One point of damage, which comes take... out of your um, wound box, which comes out of your shielding. So that is now only seven bonus health, but I am madder now. You are madder. I'm, I'm just glad, like, out of all the people to attack, Galgamon's attack, and the dude with a massive amount of armor. <laughs> Listen, when you okay. get taken over by fucking chrome, like, ninja farm and stuff... Uh, one, two, three to reroll. All right, four successes against your dodge. I have oh, no you dodge. Oh, you don't have any old dodge, do you? <laughs> that was all right. The last one went away. Uh, 
four plus damage of eight, so that's 12 points of damage. I mean, I lose a temporary hitbox, but... There you go. And, and you I'm mad. Better. You are now at nine of 12 Berserk. Oh, yeah. This dog is frothy. Alright. Uh, and Derek's turn. Derek saw that that didn't work very well, so he's going to use the rest of his move to back right the hell back up. Alright. Eleanor and Vajramon. Hello, I am here. I barely can Oh, cat. <laughs> Alright, what's Eleanor going to do? What's Vajramon going to do? Uh, Eleanor is going to try to give that boy some confidence. So I do want to direct for accuracy. With bolstering, um, or just on its own? Maybe. Um, I also want to ask, because I, Eleanor just kind of feels useless just standing here. Mm -hmm. um, she wants to see if there's any way of causing some kind of avalanche, or something that could halt or at least distract the other Digimon. Okay, uh, do a survival check for understanding your environment. Okay. Let's see. So that's going to be what will... Is that going to be intelligence or willpower? That's intelligence plus survival. All right. So that's going to be... Cool. All right. Uh, looking around, you are just by where the Sea of Stillness starts with the frozen waves, but you saw that this is where the Mammoth Mon also cut out chunks from the ice so they could get to the water beneath. And you notice that the ice has cracked a fair amount, and it seems to be slightly structurally unsound out there. It's the most standout thing to you, you know, that the ice, which is like, these guys are just ice devimon on back of map. This map one is hovering just above, over, before where the ice starts. If you could lure them out over the ice, these things being how heavy they are would definitely break through it. I think Eleanor relays that information to Stella and Chiogo. All right. And you're going to use your other action for just a standard direct? Yes. All right. Plus seven to accuracy or dodge? That is going to be to accuracy. All right. Tess, Vajramon. Yeah. Um. So, hold on. Where are we trying to, like, lure the Digimon over somewhere? Because Vajramon has... Um... Oh no! Yes, starting attack. right here is where the ice kicks in, and you can see the uh, and the ice isn't very structurally sound at the moment. Um. Okay. Um. Hold on. Where was that? Sorry. I... Pretty much at the bottom. It's a distance back. Okay. So we, what kind of leading them like downwards? Are you saying is that the plan? That's what Eleanor suggested, not what I said. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's what. I don't so think El Eleanor, Eleanor was close enough to communicate that to Vajramon, though. And really, would Vajramon do anything but just try and hit them? I mean, he can kind of not help knock them down there if, yeah. like, Eleanor really wants him to. I don't know if she can hear him clearly from there, other than uh, cheering. You always say that was what the direct was. <laughs> oh, that could be. Yeah, you know yeah. what? Yeah, Push that makes him sense. That way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Push him towards the ice, dear. They they won't hold up. The ice won't hold out. All right. Okay. Um, so he's gonna. Um, so what you he's do gonna do? You actually have a knockback technique. Yes, that's what I was gonna use. I was gonna use his knockback, his furious stomp, All right. which is hits in a burst range <laughs> as well. Is it damage so or just knockback? It's not a damage move. Okay. It's just knockback. So go ahead and roll your accuracy on that. Accuracy is um, all right. That's six. 
burst melee, okay. which should be just um, your basic what's right next to you. Okay. So, is that just the six? No, I have close You've been combo. bolstered as well, so... I've been, that's a have 15. I been, oh yeah, I was bolstered. Well, you do it right. So, 15. So, how much? How much was the direct? Sorry, I'm just trying. Plus to... seven. Plus seven. Six. Yeah, so fifteen. Just trying to make sure I've got everything. Making sure the boffo goes right. Nice. All right. Do you re-roll anything? Um, I don't have any re-rolls. What do I think? Okay. Uh, you do have reach on this, so your thing's going to go one square further. So knockback is going to affect Clive, Zen, Inukibamon, Hyogamon, this Mammothmon, and Furydramon. So each of you roll a dodge check. If you get below five, you are going to be. I get below five. Moved three spaces. Uh, Galgamon rolls this as well. No, but I think no, Galgamon Galgamon's just be... out of range. Galgamon's okay. going to get rolled over by Inuma. Okay. <laughs> All right. uh, first for Mammothmon. Sorry if you hear my eating noises, by the way. Mammothmon goes three. Three, I honestly hope it doesn't affect Hyogamon. It just falls. Aww. Uh, well, Hyogamon gets knocked back, but the knockback also like knocks Hyogamon off. Hyogamon falls onto the ground. Idiot. I'm actually gonna like, uh, it. It's fallen back. Like it's not. It's right next to this thing, but it's on the ground. So okay. where does where does my where do where do I go? Because that definitely hits me. Uh, Oh, it's guaranteed hit? I have negative dodge again. If the target would be pushed into a solid object, uh, if it would be pushed into a group of enemy Digimon, use the throwing guidelines for the damage each party takes. Throwing. <laughs> There's stuff on I actually looked up the throwing mechanics one time. I, I haven't written down time. throwing, so I actually have to search it in the main doc. Uh, can use it. Uh, let's see. It's part of. I think it's part of the clashing. I guess wherever that is. Uh, control of Clash deals damage to the target Digimon equal to its damage stat reduced by armor as normal. If the thrown Digimon hit a group of enemies, consider it a basic ranged attack with a bonus to the accuracy equal to the controller's CPU stat. So, uh, Vajramon. Okay. Sorry. Roll one accuracy check with a plus three. So, uh, just a nine. Uh, so 9d6? Yeah, just a 9d6. And I'm going to consider that against this member oh. on here. She hit directly for 2 plus your damage, 7. So for 9, reduced by this guy's armor of 10. So it takes one wound box. I believe I also take a wound box. Uh, yeah. And I get madder. Guys, I'm, I'm almost a critical mad. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know what specific damage rules you take, but I'm sure it's just one wound box with how much armor you've got going on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. Okay. You know, I'm a uh, 10 of 12. You go down to 5 protecting boxes, and you go up to 10 berserk. Okay. Uh, okay. I just, I just want to. Hold on. I just want to check. Yeah. Um, 
even though like that damage was like caused by me, that doesn't count as like, like a successful attack for combat monster bonuses or anything like that. It wouldn't, no. No. Yeah, I'd figured it wouldn't. I was just wanted to check. You still here, Bridget? Just yeah, I'm here. Uh, also, here's just, your like, one and Zen also need to do dodge rolls. Oh, sorry. Just yes, thinking yes? about how how much like like I've already missed something I could have used earlier in addition to all her attack, <laughs> which I missed earlier. But uh, that's beneath the five. So Zen goes back three. Is is fine though because they don't hit anything solid. <laughs> Ain't no walls over there. And fairy Jermon's roll. So, just double checking dodge. <laughs> One, two, three. All right. So oh, I wait. No, Vatron still had one more action, didn't it? Yeah, I only used the one. Um, okay. What is? He's just gonna like move in, kind of over here, just to kind of right. yeah prevent them from kind of moving back up towards uh -huh. the top. Okay. Shioko and Clive. Okay. All right. <clears throat> he went. Okie dokie. Um. Hmm. Am I in range enough to do a, a, a bolster direct for accuracy? Yep. All right. You can do that. Okay. Awesome. So that is a plus eight to your next accuracy. All right. Uh, what uh, what Clive's going to do is he's going to use uh, an attack where he just it has the charge tag on it. So he's going to uh, flap his wings really hard and um, come barreling down at the Hyogamon. Yeah, uh, and use divine lightning claw. So his uh, his um, his gloved hand starts to glow this bright, bright white light, and it sort of crackles with this uh, static as it comes down. And I think um, maybe the Hyogamon's like hair stands on end, and I think that's a fun look. <laughs> All right, so you just zoom all the way down right up to this Hyogawan and floor it right in the chest. Give me an accuracy check yep. for that. So I've got his accuracy, which is seven, and then so it's 13. I know uh, that was um, bolstered as well. It's, so it's 15. 15. Hell yeah. Fuck me. What the hell? That's horrible. Oh. Yeah. You don't have any rerolls? No, because it was I'm doing agility. Jesus Christ! Still hits. It's, it's yes. still hits. So many ones. Also, you're all the way up <laughs> okay. there. You don't forget to move What's yourself. What's your damage? Uh, damage is um, oh, it's also got seven. Strikes. You negated that. Oh yeah, one it's dodge. got yeah. That's right. Uh, so certain strike, I have two ranks in it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that's gonna negate so both of them. So your full damage is gonna hit plus your. So it's uh, ten three total. Successes. All right, 10 total. This thing has an armor of nine. It takes one wound box. It's not looking great. It's still standing, and you're right up on it now, but it isn't looking great. Uh, and then from that vantage point, I guess, um, mm -hmm. what Clive is going to do next is going to be... Um, it's going to, I think, uh, the seeing, uh, I don't know actually if I'm in range for this, but I would want to do a Mielas Jelniaro on the Ice Devimon, because it does not like what it's doing to Galgamon at all. Uh, with this Mammothmon in the way and Galgamon right over it, it's going to be really hard to get a shot on that. All right. Um, if you want to do it, I'll let you, but you're going to take an accuracy penalty to that. Mm, I don't think I'm going to risk that. Uh, instead, uh, I can only use the same attack once per turn, so I'm not going to do that. 
Uh, can I hit just the Mammoth Mon then? Would that be easier? The Mammoth Mon that uh, the Devimon is riding on? It's more like this Mammoth Mon here is really... Because the Hygomon's basically... Oh, right, the Hygomon fell off. Before it. Right, it's yeah, on the ground. Yeah, so the Mammoth Mon got pushed back as well. It's kind of blocking your entire vision beyond this point. Okay. Especially with Galgamon and Nukibomon here, it's really hard to see, like, get an aim on this at all. Because all this melee is going on around here. Alright, uh, so in that case, I think what Clive is going to do then is he's going to go into uh, defensive stance. Alright. Fancy. That's going to halve your accuracy and double your dodge. Yep. Okay. It is now the Manathon's turn. I'm just going to reduce the uh, number of turns everyone gets swiftness for. Okay, so Hyogamon, who goes at the same time as that, is going to get itself up blearily and take a swipe at Clive, who is basically right up in front of it. Baby boy. So it's going to use Ice Club on you, which is weapon one accuracy, so that's seven, and it still has swiftness, so that's 11. Oh I no! 11 versus uh, Clive's uh, dodge, which is seven, uh, but it's... it's uh, Doubled to 14? By, is it doubled or increased by 50%? Uh, I'll check. I'm pretty sure it's doubled. Okay. I believe in Clive. Nope, it's raised by 50%, but I have been doing it wrong all this time, though, so I'm just going to give you guys doubling for it as well for this. All right, cool. So that's going to be roll 14d6. I believe in Clive. Do you have agility? Five. I have agility and avoidance. Cool, so re-roll all your ones and twos. Oh, that's you got one. it. Seven successes. You dodged this. Okay. Joker's just I cheering for you in the background. And five ducks under. And seeing that going bad and feeling its wounds, this Hyogamon is going to start backing up. It's going to run up and it's going to leap up uh, on this Mammothmon with Ice Devimon. Actually, before it does that, I would like to use my uh, counter tag on Divine yeah, that's Lightning true. Claw. It did just miss you. You've got a counter attack. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> so... Obliterate it. <laughs> the target uh -oh. only rolls half of their dodge pool in response to the new attack. Wait, hold on, because I have counter attack, but uh, Divine Lightning Claw is counter blow. Oh, it's both things. Isn't uh, that also like half, the half armor? the armor stat and half my dodge? Oof. Awesome. All right, now it's hulking. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so this powerful kitty cat. So yes, yeah, so free attack with the target. So uh, half of my dodge because I've got the benefit on that is four. So you yeah. go and roll your accuracy first. Okay, so my accuracy is uh, is going to be halved or reduced by 50%. That's the same. So halved. Yes. Uh, okay. I've got a rule on whether you round down or round up. It is... Always round up. You have four accuracy. All right, so 4d6. Uh, greater than... Five. Damn it. Oh. Unfortunately, this thing pulls away from your counterattack and runs all the way back and leaps up with Ice Devimon on this Mammothon. It feels the Reaper standing over it, though. <laughs> it does. Okay. All right. It's the Mammothon's turn. I'm just going to pretend uh, this that, like, cut a cloud in half above it. It's like... <laughs> going to stand up and move slightly just to better block you guys. So it's, that's one movement from it, and then it's going to use an attack. And it is going to use... It's going to pull back one more and use Freezing Breath, which is a ranged cone. So that's going to get the four of you. Uh, this is the one that got benefited by Swiftness, so it's got a plus four to your, its accuracy. So that is... 10d6. Three successes. It hits so... me. <laughs> Alright. I easily that. dodges that. Uh, Hannah, Galgamon. Alright. 
What, what am I? Dodging. Uh, roll, roll and dodge. And the same for you with Vajramon, Tess. Uh, nope. Nope, three's enough, I think. Yeah, three's enough. Oh, okay. Oof. Oh. Okay. So Inukibomon and Vajramon are both hit by freezing breath. It does. I had three successes and five points of damage, so eight damage. Okay, I take one. Um, eight damage. Well, I have seven armor, so... You take one? Just one. Inukibomon is up to eleven rage. He's, He's frothy. And Vajramon Critical takes one point of damage. And you are both affected by paralysis. Oh. What it means is the target treats all terrain as difficult terrain for the duration of this effect and takes a penalty to their dodge equal to the user's bit value. I thought the target's status flashing, the flash ends. I thought statuses on damaging attacks only worked if you got two damage in. You're right, I only did one damage to the both of you. Neither of you were paralyzed. We're fine. Okay. <laughs> Thick fur. <laughs> this Mammothmon here is going to use a Tusk Charge to just try and do a pass attack that runs right through you all. Let's pass. Uh, move a distance equal to chosen movement score. Yeah, at least Galgamon is uh, uncharmed. And now. this thing doesn't have its benefit, so it's just six d6 greater than five. Okay, this thing is about to charge from here to here. Uh, if any of you get less than two, you're about to take damage. I took Ooh, damage. Who has to roll? Uh, roll a uh, dodge. Uh, who? No, no, who uh, does, do I have Bajamon to? And... Why do you? Yeah. Why did it even mark damage on you guys? You guys still have armor. Yeah, I think it's literally every Digimon has to roll right now. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. Uh, well, uh, let me re-roll those. I've got agility, so I can re-roll those at least. This one's... Yeah, no. Alright. So, Galgamon is getting hit in full. Two successes plus damage of five. Oh, it's also got four. armor piercing. Oh, okay. Oh, it has armor piercing. This so, might actually hurt me. Armor is not applying, so... Uh, how how much armor plus, piercing does it have? Uh, six points. Jeez. It's doing seven damage, and it's ignoring six armor. So okay, let's uh, it, go from the top. You need to keep them on. It still only does one to me. Yep, okay. I have and... 21 armor right now. Is that critical uh, mad? Are you critical mad now? I'm critical mad. Actually, I guess I, I have 20 armor. And now I have 21 and I'm critical mad. Okay, next up, Galgamon. What did uh, you roll? No successes, so you're taking the full seven damage. Yes, but I still have the sh extra wound boxes from shielding, so. Right, so you've have... got one wound box from shielding now. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Clive dodged successfully. Uh, Vajramon. I haven't okay, rolled yet. I'm going to roll your dodge. Okay, uh, how much armor do you have? Seven. All right, so I negate all but one of that, so you remove two points from that, so you're taking five damage, which is going to reduce you down to two shielding. Yep. And Fury Dramon. Oh, uh, boy. Dodge. Do, does this, these, like, shield, like, wound boxes still count for, like, combat monster? Yes, do, I would assume. Okay. I would assume I so. I don't know if they do. It's, I mean, there's still damage. It just says it's, whenever the Digimon takes damage. Uh, it is temporary. Digimon, they are temporary. Oh, Fairy Digimon's got shielding. So Fairy Digimon has armor, which is all negated. So that is I'm seven points to, of damage. Yeah, I'm going to yep. use an inspiration point uh, to try and reroll one of those. All right, because you didn't get shielding. Yeah. No. Yeah. So let's just hope. Hey! <laughs> you did it! <laughs> uh, so how many... I rolled two... Oh yeah, that's two, so you successfully avoided that. <laughs> nice. Flavor Town! <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> the fire limit's on. 
Uh, nice Bolton. try, sucker! Uh, this Manathon continues just hiding back behind this one, carrying these two. Uh, however, there is a very loud, repetitive beeping noise, like uh, kind of like a smoke alarm going off. Mm. And the sound is specifically coming from Zen, specifically the Digivice she is holding. Uh, yeah. As the circuit pattern of it has completely covered around the Digivice and started to cross over onto your hand. I think you've got a virus. Inu Kibamon is wrapped in the circuit patterns, which wrap around it into a large egg shape, which swells up in size again. And we're going to see where that takes us in the next session. Oh, <laughs> right. Big dog. Oh, and next, the next next session for the next turn is is the charm worn off then. Yes, it only lasted. Oh. Yes. It, it lasted two turns, or until one of their allies attacks you, which both have passed now. Oh, bless. Gagamon's ready to fight the actual bad guys. <laughs> God. This dog is so you guys will get to see you guys will get to see his last form. Yes. So, uh, right. Taurus, uh, as heads up for your notes, uh, I guess we're, mm-hmm. uh, we're we're done. So I should end the recording, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh.